Okay, guys, it looks like we're almost ready to start. Uh, just to give you a quick update on the incentives, currently uh, Kill Whisper is uh, winning by uh, $55 to $25. Uh, the cutoff will be about an hour and 10 minutes into the run. So if you do want to save Whisper, get those donations in quickly. The next donation incentive to save or abandon the prisoners uh, will be about uh, two, two hours, hours in for the, the cutoff. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, currently Save the Prisoners is winning by $30 to 20 so very close. Seems uh, like kind of weird priority, saving uh, the prisoners but killing Whisper. Yeah, well, it's, you know, uh, I mean, you can't just ignore the prisoners. It's all for a Even good cause. It's all but for she's a good your good friend. Cause. You, we need to donate to save Whisper, guys. She's a cool character. It saves time. It saves time. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still thinking about donating for that glitch showcase. Oh, $80 yeah. out of 500 You definitely don't want to miss that. It's going to be good. Yeah, the yeah. glitch showcase should be really cool to watch. Um, so we need, you know, we should get our donations in for that. <laughs> yeah, even if you're familiar with the game, the glitch exhibition is going to show off things you've never seen before. So keep your eyes peeled. Nice. Uh, right, uh, so are we ready to go? Cool. Right. Good luck. Um, luck on the run. Cool. So let's go. Right, so this is Fable of the Lost Chapters, 100%. My name's Etem, and the first thing you'll notice here is that I'm rolling all over the place, and that's not just for fun. So rolling is a whole bunch faster than running, and as we level up our speed stat throughout the game, it will actually increase our rolling speed, and we'll use a whole bunch of other movement techniques with it, so it's quite handy. So the first thing we're going to do is get three gold pieces to get some chocolates for our sister, and we're going to beat up this bully who's got a teddy bear. So we've done a good deed, so we can... Get our teddy bear, and then we're going to give the teddy bear to the person he stole it off, and it gives us another good deed, and then we're going to do a bad deed, and doing a bad deed will trigger these guards here to start chasing us. There's two potential guards that can catch us, and each one loses a couple of seconds. So here's one, here's your teddy bear. And here's our gold. So the bad deed we're going to do what? is there's a guy who's been very unfaithful to his wife over here, so we're going to actually take a bribe from him to say, oh yeah, we'll keep our mouths shut. So we've done a bad deed, so now the guards will be chasing us. So now we're going to go to this trader with a fabulous moustache. And we're going to get the chocolates from him. And hopefully avoid these guards. So this guy is walking. And he's walking right towards me. But we avoided him, that's good. And you'll know, because there'll be a voice land that probably sounds something like this. Like that. So here's our sister, it's her birthday, so we're giving her chocolates. And there's definitely not going to be anything wrong, go Hello, nothing going wrong here. This is a lovely town, there's nothing going to happen, and oh god, there's a, something's happened, and there was an accident with the birthday candles or something. So now the village is burning, so we need to go sa see our father, whose surprise is dead. We're going to get saved by Maze, who is definitely not a traitor, he's definitely not going to stab us in the back like two hours from now. So I did mention this is 100% so we'll be doing a whole bunch of stuff including getting all the quests, opening all the demon doors, opening all the silver chests, whole bunch of stuff, all legendary weapons and here's Whisper, we don't like her so we're going to punch her twice and that's set up for a trick that saves a minute later, it's not just for fun. So the first thing we're going to do actually here is pick up a bunch of books because one of the quests involves, um, we're basically going to be giving a whole bunch of books to a teacher and then we get a silver key from it. And there's like 25 books and like 10 of them are here, so it's quite nice. So we're just going to make our way to the Guildmaster. He's here. You finally... Yep, there we go. All right, let's... So we're going to start by just punching this dummy. It's just basically, this is just like the tutorial level of here's how to be a hero. Because that's, that's our goal. Ah, now that's more like... well done, lad. So next here, we're going to be fighting some beetles. It sounds pretty straightforward. It's literally 10 beetles. They all take one hit to die. Should be pretty easy, but... The beetles like to jump up and fly up, which messes up like the targeting system in this game. So it ends up freaking out and you end up missing hits and resetting a lot and it's terrible. 
So we're just going to roll up here. And the idea is you want to sort of keep them all clumped together so you get as many in a hit. That's pretty good. Go get a double hit here, not quite. Your stick. Well done, lad. The beetles are all dead. So I would normally make Beetle some crummy joke here start. about two of the beetles still being alive, but I'll spare you that. Um, if there's any messages you want to read out, that's like a pretty good time. We have a reminder about some uh, bit wars still going on, and that will be Kill Whisper or Safe Whisper. And Kill Whisper still in the lead with $55, Good. followed by Safe Whisper with $25. And Saving the Prisoners or Abandoning the Prisoners, uh, currently in the lead is Time to Be a Hero, Save the Prisoners with $30, followed by Abandoning the Prisoners with $20. So keep those donations coming in to change this. Thank you very much. Right then, so here's Whisper, we're going to do a little bit of just like basic sparring with her, so we're going to attack her and then she's going to attack us and we're going to have to block her hits and then we just have to fight her. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. But sometimes she doesn't play nice with us. Pretty good. Well done. So in theory, I'll attack her nope. twice and she'll flip the wrong way and then I'll attack her four times. There you go. That's that wasn't too bad. I've definitely had a lot worse, especially in practice. So here's where that skit where we punch Whisper and a bunch of times come to play. So this is the archery training. So the guild master is going to ask us, oh hey, hit eat these dummies three times and then see how many you can hit in a minute. And what we're going to do is basically the guild right now has a four strike system of you hit someone four times, you get in trouble. And if you do it during this tutorial, the guild master is like, hey, you shouldn't do that. But then he's just like, okay, you can skip it now. There you go, it skipped. So, minute saved. Nice and easy. And that's like a strap from back to like 2005 or something that was like done very early on. And shout outs to whoever found that out because I definitely would have not thought to do that. And we're going to do the same here, another 30 second save. So, I need to remember to right click here. I'm going to say this out loud because I know I'm going to forget it otherwise. Because there's actually a little mini quest here. So, I'm going to right click here. There's actually a little mini side quest thing here where we just fight some bandits. A lot of people don't realize this is even a quest and like it's required, but no, it's a silver quest. Like it adds on to your counter and stuff. So we gotta do it. So here's Whisper. So this is a pretty straightforward thing. It's literally just killing three bandits. The main thing you want to do is just get them as quickly as possible and avoid getting hit. But it's super easy. Like that's one. He's gonna hit me now. There you go. Dodge it. And this guy here is going to hit me now. Oh, no, he's not. And this was going to claim credit. We did it! No, we didn't. It was me. I did it. And also, while I'm here, I'm just going to resort my hotbar a little bit just because when we get like new items or spells or whatever, it will fill up on our hotbar and I just want them the way that I like them. I'm going to talk to the guild master and do the last part of our guild training. Any apprentices want to practice melee combat? Oh, hello, guild master. Guess we'll become an adult. Before you graduate. So here's Maze, who's still definitely not a traitor, and we're going to fight him, but not for real. So it's just going to be hit him with our sword, bow, and magic, and he's in a pretty good spot. So we can hit him in the back and potentially get maze skip, which I've literally never gotten before, I don't think. There's also a funny thing that can happen here. If you're too close to him, like the game will freeze for a moment. He usually ma he makes some kind of dumb pose, and um, that was the origin. Like when I first started running the game, he made a really dumb face, which really made me laugh. So if you've got Frank Face Z enabled, if it's enabled in chat. You can, you can put in a maze-gasm in chat and you can see Maze's lovely face. Alright, so we're on our way to become a, a proper hero. 
It's time for you to So First we're gonna get we an upgrade and we're gonna get Assassin's Rush, which basically Where just pushes us forward a little bit. And we're gonna use this with rolling to go quickly. Especially when we take our first quest, the Wasp Queen, which is just like you fight some wasps and then you fight a very big wasp. So this rush forward is Assassin's Rush, so what you can also do is if there's something in front, if you're targeting something, you can rush towards it. So I'll try and demonstrate it here. So you can see I rush I rush through her and that's called a zip. And we go that's both a benefit and a drawback because the benefit is that you can run rush through people, but the drawback is that if there's something behind you that's really quick, you're just gonna keep rushing backwards, so it's no use, you might as well just roll. So we're gonna start by just zapping these wasps. And this one here. Right, and here's the big bad wasp. So most bosses and some mini bosses in this game have something called, we just call like phases, I guess, where like if you attack them, they'll only take a certain amount of damage and then they'll go and do something. So in this case, this wasp is gonna spawn some more wasps and now she can be killed. So no matter how much damage you do, you can't kill her in one hit. Cool, so that's done. Very easy stuff, it's just literally clicking a, a thing until it dies. So we're going to head up to our first town here, Bowerstone, and we're going to do a couple of things here. So we're going to use a glitch, it's just called the buying and selling glitch, I guess. Um, so the way the trading system works in this game is, if a trader has something in bulk, so like say for instance they have 100 apples, they'll sell them to, f to you really cheaply. And if you buy them in bulk, you'll get them all for the bulk price. But then suddenly they don't have that item anymore, so they'll be like, oh, well, I've got to pay a lot for it. I don't have any of it. So you can basically sell an item back for more than you originally paid for it, which is very, very good economics. So um, we're going to use that to make some gold. So we're in Bowstone South. This trader here, we're going to say hello to him. So we're going to sell our potions just to get a bit of starting out gold. Buy these apple pies and grain sacks. You notice we're at 400 gold right now. We're going to sell them back. And bam, we've made two, nearly 3k gold. We're going to buy some other bits and pieces. We'll also go buy some food for later because we need to eat it at a certain point. And that's it. And that guy says stay within the law. We're going to disregard that and smash this barrel which has a moonfish. And... Moonfish is just, you eat it and it turns to night, which we're going to use for like, some stuff can only be done at day, some c stuff can only be done at night, so we're going to do that. Another book, and the first of 30 silver keys, which we're scoured out throughout the land, not all of them are that easy, but we're going to get them all anyway. So this bit coming up here is actually quite stressful for me. One other thing in 100% is pub games, which is just like all these little mini games, so this is a a matching pairs game and I'm just absolutely awful at it so we'll see how this goes so 3 9 5 7 5 10, 7 10, 6 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Uh, 8 cool I got that that is one of the most stressful parts of the run. Not, not even any stretch, just me actually having a good memory. So that's the first of many hero dolls. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, okay. That's the first crash of the game. Luckily, it happened just after an auto save, so we basically lost nothing. But there we go. <laughs> I literally have no idea what happened there. Oh, we're sorry. The game closed badly. So we call this game Stable Fable for a reason because it just loves to crash, but luckily that's like one of the best points for it to crash, if any. So where are we? Yeah, not bad at all. Do we still have the doll? We're in business. So before we were so rudely interrupted, we're just going to use all that newfangled gold to buy ourselves a new sword that's slightly better and a new bow which is tons better. 
and there's this sick child here and there's this mother and a few weeks ago I realised that this mother says oh woe and you can't hear anything else. Oh woe is me. There you go. Furries and Fable confirmed. Anyway, um, we're going to head up here and pick up a super special potion thing that just gives us strength XP times our combat multiplier which is just basically our combo meter. Um, so we're going to use that when we have a whole bunch of combat multiplier and then we get a whole bunch of XP and it's lovely. That kid's going to tell us about the hero dolls and we're going to head over to Bowerstone Key and there's a little mini quest called Beardy Baldy and it's basically this guy wants us to dress up nicely to impress his daughter but spoiler alert, he's basically catfishing you, there is no daughter, he just wants you to look stupid in his own words but we have to oblige. So hello there friend. I literally have no idea what happened with that crash by the way, like I've never seen it just freeze and then just close on its own, normally it says oh Fable stop working or freaks out in some other way. If that's the only crash that happens, I'll be happy. Like literally in the world record run, my game crashed at like just after an auto save as well, so I only lost like 30 seconds to it. I was like, I can just pretend I was bad and it didn't crash. So we're gonna dress up, start off with this hairstyle, and unfortunately you do have to keep going back, picking up a hair uh, style card and then going back every time, you can't just get it all in one go. And um, yeah. The other thing is that you can't also trick him and like go to him with the styles he already wants because then otherwise you he gives you just like alternative styles which is actually kind of cool. Also in the game code there is a thing where like apparently if you talk to him long enough he's like oh okay I'll be honest I never really had a thing but here you go have some consolation. But I have not found a way to actually have it happen in game which would be really ideal because it would save like two minutes and a bunch of teleporting and stuff. Um, there's not really too much going on here, so if there's any more messages you want to read out. Yeah, we have some donations rolling in like you rolling. So <laughs> hey. we have a five dollar donation from Lollipop OMG. Oh dude, shout outs. Saying hey Itam. Uh good luck on the run. Also, why isn't this dumb blindfolded? Oh yeah, so um lot about two weeks ago we did a blindfolded race where we tried to finish the first part of the game blindfolded well i say we i was commentating they're all watching which was very hilarious for me but um just finishing that first bit the childhood which is normally two minutes it took well the uh, lollipop there beat the world record which was 25 minutes so uh, it's a lot harder than it looks it's, it really challenges your view of the game of like it's like oh yeah this is there it's like no it wasn't there at all um but it was definitely very fun so I definitely won't be wearing a blindfold for this, thank god. So we've got our last style piece, and I just want to really admire our hero for a second. He looks absolutely dashing. But luckily, luckily we're not going to keep that for the rest of the run. We're going to get rid of it, because we've got like a super low like attractiveness and scariness level. Um, so we're going to change that so we get better deals at like the traders and stuff. We have another $5 donation from Anonymous saying, Hey, it's your bro. Good luck on the run. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> if Atomus get, gets this message, he has to eat honey. Buzz, buzz. <laughs> let's get rolling. He said he would donate that, and I'm still... Ah, oh, I don't... I did the wrong thing. Anyway, uh, yeah. He said I was going to do that, and I can't believe he's done it anyway. Unforgivable. But yeah. Thank you so much. And what we're going to do is we're going to sleep in this bed here. Um, we're going to change it to night. So the thing that happens at night here with this little ring is the fist fight, which is basically just you punch a bunch of people and they try and punch you. Um, so there's four rounds of it. The first two we're going to do completely legit. The last two we're going to cheese in an absolutely hilarious way. While we're waiting, we're just going to do a bit of fishing. Not just fun. This fishing game is... I really hate it with a passion. But what we have to do is there's a little mini quest called Fishing Competition and you have to get a 50 gram fish, so that was 14 grams, nowhere near enough, but we've got a bit of time, so ideally we get it here, if not we'll get it later, it's fine. So it basically just, it pulls on the line and then you reel it in, and then it starts pulling on the line again, well it didn't there, so here's hoping it's a good one. 67, that is insanely good, I think I've never gotten it second try before really really good so we basically say we're literally on world record pace right now the guy hasn't even spawned so any time today this guy's gonna spawn yeah there you go so i'm gonna pick up this while i'm waiting which no. 
Perfect. So, hello there. These guys are just cheering us on while we're beating each other to death. We don't actually kill them, it's just about how many hits you deal to them. So we can step out the ring for about 10 seconds. If you go out far enough, it just instantly disqualifies you, which loses like so much time that it's not even funny. But luckily we go just sort of pretend that doesn't happen. There's two more rounds of this, and the last round is that big guy that we spoke to. So I'm going to rush back a little bit just so he runs towards me. Okay. And there we go. I'll take care of so we're going to kick him in the face, knock him down, and then we basically ideally want to get him in the back and then just keep hitting him so he doesn't, you can't block our hits. And then adjusting every so often so he doesn't go too far at the ring. And he's really blocking like mad. Go on, play nice. Cool, that's done. So we're going to head back to the guild and take our next quest, Protect or Attack Orchard Farm. We're going to protect it just because it's quicker. There's Briar Rose, we'll see her later. So Protect Orchard Farm. We're also going to boast, that just takes us outside and saves a couple of seconds because it's on the way to where we're going anyway, so... Not bad at all. Yeah. These these two guys are literally baked out their mind, hey. and they basically they found a blue mushroom and they lost it. And blue mushrooms just another mini quest. Um, we had to go run into someone with one. Just a second, we also just picked up another key. So up here. So this lady here, she has a blue mushroom. She's baked out of her mind and she wants us to la uh, make her laugh. We're not going to do that, we're going to be mean and just kill her. There you go, blue mushroom. And also if you're wondering like what we do in terms of good and evil and stuff, we basically start off the game ever so slightly evil, we make our way to be all the way good and then we instantly become evil in like the space of about two minutes. And stay tuned for that because it's another crazy strat to Get it. So we picked up another skill potion thing, which gives us um, skill XP rather than strength XP. So we're going to use those both for the next quest. So just go drop that there. And I screw that up. Yeah. This next area here is like one of those instances of it's better to just roll than rushing and rolling because the wasps here are like insanely quick. So. You're not, you're not going anywhere, friend, with that. Like, as soon as they are going on to you, I'll just show you what happens. So you rush forward, that's fine. You rush in, oh, you're going backwards. It's no good. So you sort of just like rush when you can. If there's something in front of you, like here, you can rush by all means, but don't count on it. This chest here has a Willmaster's Elixir, which just increases our mana pool by a little bit. It's quite nice. And every other wasp lost interest. They, these all guys are interested, but they sort of forgot about me. I wish that would happen in 80%. Just There's the Fisher Creek where we'll be doing the fishing competition. Well, we, we're not actually doing it, we'll just be instantly passing it. <laughs> While we're fishing here, have you got any more messages? Feel free. We have a couple of donations coming in. Oh, and brilliant. we got a $10 donation from Amanda saying good luck at 10. Oh, uh, don't knock off any traders off a cliff tonight. <laughs> yeah, I I had a bit of trouble with practice, practicing like a certain split later on. And I lost five minutes in just an absolutely bizarre way. Um, it was, I, I still don't know how it happened. But again, stay tuned for that. Quote. There's so many cool bits of this of this game in 100% that you'll you'll get to see so we have a $20 donation from Owen Wilson's car keys oh, saying dude. we can save the prisoners wow I'm totally putting $20 toward this I don't I'll donate another $10 if the chat 
can give a wow shout out to the to car keys all over the world. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. 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 Unbelievable. That's all that's all the Owen Wilson you're getting from me today. Um, anyway, so here we've got the Rod of Champions, which is like a purple rod, and it lets us push things up easier and quicker. So it's ideal to get it as soon as possible. That's one of the things we need the 50 gram fish for. You can see this here is just like being an absolute unit right here. Just doesn't even need a shirt on or anything. It also works out quite nicely. So. Some chests in the game require a certain amount of silver keys to open. So we've got four right now. We were about to pick up our fifth and then open a five silver key chest. So we uh, managed to route that in quite nicely. So we literally got the last key just before we open it. It's quite nice. But there's 30 in the game, so we're only 10% of the way through. So we go. This bridge here, like it says bridge down, it never gets open. It's never explained why. It's like one of those weird plot points that just they just sort of hang up there and nothing ever happened with it. Bandit would just go pretend he's not there. Open this chest. Oh, excuse me. Okay. So open this chest. Get an elixir alive that just increases our health by a bit. Oh, excuse me. We have another twenty dollar donation from Mr. Confusing saying, My boy, at ten. Good luck on the run. You're gonna crush it. Sorry I could not be there in person this year, but I'm watching from home. Yeah, dude, thank you so much. Very kind of you. Shout out, so we're all missing you here, buddy. So yeah, anyway, um this is Orchard Farm. We're going to just kill all these bandits. It's basically just three ways of three bandits. Nothing special to it. The only thing we need to do is avoid getting hit, which is Easier said than done. And you see that six in the corner, that's our combat multiplier. And we want to keep that, but just by zapping our little buddies here. Because it just drops as you either take damage Watch or out. just over time. So we're just going to attack them before the timer starts for it to start dropping. So, hello, friend. Give you a love zap. Look out! More bandits! So those archer guys here, the one that I just killed, are the ones that can like hit you because they can just like fire off an arrow and there's nothing you can do and it's terrible. Speaking of nothing you can do, this guy is going to die as well. Just that last bit of combat multiplier. And we use our potion, so we've now got 12k XP, which is a whole bunch compared to what we should normally have. This whisper again. We're not killing her just yet, not just yet. Or sparing her, or sparing her. That's quest done, not bad, and we're just going to do another little spot of fishing here. The sort of first part of the game is like doing all the little bits and pieces, just basically getting ourselves all ready to go for the second half where we just like go crazy. Wow, this fish is being a real pain today. There okay. On the way to this bit, if there's any more donations you want to read out, go ahead. We have a twenty dollar donation from Anonymous saying XD. 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 We have a twenty dollar donation from the Cactus God saying donation to runner's choice. I'm gonna put it towards glitch exhibition because again you don't want to miss it, it's gonna be insane. Okay. And we have a ten dollar donation from Funny Haha <laughs> saying show funny glitch. I'll, I'll show funny glitch, haha. -ha. Some bandits have set up a toll in this region. Be careful. There's a guildmaster very kindly pointed out. So there's some bandits here, and this is another quest that you don't realize is a quest, but is. But like, you can actually finish this quest, and you do it by um by killing the head bandit. We're also going to just kill these bandits here as well for a bit of XP, for because we're going to upgrade all our stats and stuff in a bit. Again, we just want to avoid getting hit. It's like Orchard Farm, but on steroids. Hello there. This guy here doesn't even know what's going to hit him. Neither does this one. So. 
I like how you can also just charge your bow while it's rolling and you just get some funky animation. I'd like to see someone try rolling while like pulling back a bow in real life. It'd be... Okay. Dead. Those little green orbs on the floor are the XP and you can like, there's a little button you can press that pulls them towards you which is quite handy. Like you don't have to walk over each one individually, it'd be a complete nightmare and it'd be a terrible speed game. Here's a demon door, we'll come back to him later. Alright, so, we're going to just sort our hotbar a little bit for the upcoming thing. We'll put some food down, get rid of these stuff to make way for some spells in a bit. Back to the guild we go. So, the reason we went here first before we went to the guild is because it's on the way and we can teleport back to it, so... Um, it's better to go there first and then, and then just teleport back there, save some time. Ah, physique allows you to do more damage in melee. Ah, speed. I won't explain all these upgrades, otherwise I'd be here till Christmas. Melee. But Accuracy just take my word that it's fast. More damage in magic power increases your capacity for storing mana. Right, so we got a whole bunch of spells, we're a bit stronger, we're a bit faster. Everything's going alright apart from that one crash we had. <clears throat> anyway. So just go avoid these bandits, apart from that one that hit me. Just go yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, apple. So spoiler alert, if we meet the glitch exhibition, this is the last you this won't be the last you see of this area. We'll come back to it later. There's a surprising glitch in there as well. Okay. So here's Trader Escort. This is like one of those quests where a lot of people had trouble with it when they were younger, especially me, and it turned out it's just insanely easy because when enemies chase you, they'll chase you, and then these traders will be behind them, so you literally can just run through an area and everything will be fine. Here's another trader who's been bitten. We're going to say, no, don't follow us. Save a bit of time. Actually, it saves more time to say yes to him. It saves like 0.3 of a second, but then you have to kill him. And um, I'm not about that life. So again, we can just sort of avoid all these enemies and everything is absolutely fine. Okay, avoid these spores, so Assassin's Rush also has iframes in it, so you can see I didn't take any damage from it. So that's the other benefit of Assassin's Rush, it's just all benefits. Um, I'm really glad I didn't whip that, because sometimes I'll just accidentally mess up the timing and then just get knocked down and it looks really embarrassing, but yeah. Uh, another silver key up here. See, one of the traders getting hit in the right hand side, but we're not even there close enough. But we get instead we're gonna play execute and we're gonna kill him. And this just saves a little bit of dialogue. Excellent. We can stay here until you're ready to move on. You're staying here forever, friend. We can stay here the better as far as I'm no! We're also gonna eat a bunch of meat because one of these demon doors coming up here wants us to be really fat. So we have to oblige him by just eating a bunch of food. Avoid these guys here. You can see that green dot in the top right hand corner, which is um which is our trader, and you can see he's not even close to the enemies, they don't even realise he's there. Just stop off some fishing. Luckily, everything else stops while you're fishing, so these these bandits will very kindly stop. He's like, no, he's fishing. Give the man some privacy. And then they'll start chasing us immediately after. Cool, got that easily. <laughs> and here comes a troll, and he doesn't like us being in his swamp, so 
We're gonna wanna attack us and we're gonna use our bow here. Go dodge his rocks. Attack him four times. Oh, excuse me. Okay. I'm also just gonna stay here for a sec just to get his XP. Because he gives quite a lot. So just get you the last of our food, open up this demon door that wants us to be really fat. And he lets us in, how kind of him. If there's any more messages you want to read out, go ahead. We have a $10 donation from KJ Freshly saying, oh, Kill Whisper, obviously, much love, have fun. Thank you so much, KJ. So glad you could join us. So KJ is the record holder for any percent. He's absolutely insanely good at any percent. So if you like him, check him out. And Ooh. we have an $800 donation Blimey. from Retract saying good luck to all the runners. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a very generous donation. So there's this blue mushroom here. We're we'll just going to steal it from this guy. We get a little fine for it. It's actually, we actually, it actually costs us less gold to pay the fine rather than actually buying it off him. So either way, it's cheaper. We're not even going to pay the fine. We're just going to pretend that we didn't do that and just run away. So you know when we did buying and selling back at Bowstone before, we're going to do that on steroids this time. So. We're going to buy and sell perfume and bam, we're at 9,000 gold. We're going to deal with emeralds. We're at 16k gold. I think you can see where this is going. So we're going to do this all the way up to 140k. And pick up some potions and books. Which we need for later. We just completely scuffed economy right here. It's even more broken in anniversary where you can... There's a many manipulation glitch where you can just sell sell a trader items you don't even have. So you can just like sell like 200 of a super expensive item and get like 160k gold in like 20 seconds right at the start of the game. It's, cra it's crazy. Last one. I'm also going to pick up one perfume which will be important for like an hour and a half from now. It's literally not important anytime soon. That's done. So before we stop off and say hi to Mace, who's still not a traitor, we're going to steal a book and then sleep so it's night time. And then we can do the second round of Fist Fighters, which is a lot easier than the first. And another pub game, yay! This one, again, I wish I was better at this. I wish I was better at all the pub games, because they're like a key part of this run. There's one in particular that I'm not looking forward to at all. Here's Maze. Hello, Maze. You're not a traitor. Ah, there you are. So, Check the for more heading into quest. this tavern, there will be a pub game, Good Coin Golf, which is basically just is just bet? you hit the the coin into the into the hole. So go there, I need to get into uh, under par as well, or like under a certain amount of strokes. So already, that's not good. Uh, Almost hole in one? Not quite. That's fine. This one go on to aim here. Oh, that's really good. No, I overcompensated for it. Damn it. I need to get this one in under three, so ideally I need to hit this one here. I need to get this, otherwise I lose like 40 seconds. Got it. You won. Perhaps you'll come back and play some more. And it works out quite nicely because now the second fist fighter guy has spawned, so now we can go and beat up all his buddies for gold and fame and everything that comes in between. Mostly just satisfaction to be honest. These guys go down a lot easier. So that's three hits, nice and easy. Oh, 
The only downside is there is more more to this round sort of thing. Um, there's more fighters, so it's about the same speed as the last one. The other ones will be way, way, way quicker. Don't knock you down, friend. Stop messing around. The only issue is you, you notice I am whipping a lot of shots, and I have no idea why. There we go, knock you down. Come on. Stop messing around. And that's done. Well, I'm still saving 30 seconds to my world record. That's, that's pretty good. I was just going to nick a book right here. Hope they don't see me. You didn't see me, did you? No, he didn't. We're good. Hey, uh, hero, uh, can you uh, help me out? The little quest here called Ghost Pirate Thing. That's not his actual name. Shiver. So this guy, he wants us to find some treasure uh, and give it to his wife. And then he's going to give us some extra treasure. And what we're going to do is we're just going to skip the whole quest and pick up the last bit of treasure first, then it just instantly completes it. So save some time. Like minute or something. Right. Go ahead up here. If there's any like you got about time for like one one or two donations if you want it. Nice. We have a fifty dollar donation from Owen Wilson's car keys Dude. saying wow Great shout out. Here's 50 then to Safe Whisper. Let's alternate and help save children's car keys. And with this, we are currently with. Oh, we are even. We have Kill and Safe Whisper with $75 each. Oh, wow. Right then, so this guy here. This Welcome is the chicken kicking minigame. Yes, you heard right, chicken kicking. We have to kick the chickens into the right goal. The in-game explanation is this guy's eyesight isn't what it used to be, but it's actually just bad hit detection. So we need to do this three times. Um, get 250, 150, then 50. Or any, any order you want, basically, but just... So there we go, that's that. And so we can just get ourselves excluded for the last two rounds. Cross the white line, that's a That's the first one. Holy moly, I thought chi So we get the chicken hat for that. I'm gonna kick you here, friend. Ah. There is one line he says which is like, yes sir, finger licking chicken kicking real good, which I just think is absolutely yes, incredible. Sir. But um There we go, that's it. Ah. Now we can just Cross the white line, that's a we get a foot foul, as he says, a very thrilling pun. And one more time. Yes, in that's that's all we need, so we're just gonna kick ourselves Put a toe out. Over the line. Put a toe over the line. Pull a toe over the line. He really likes that voice line, doesn't he? One more time. Oh, you okay, thank you. Not a bad score. Cool, so we're going to head back to the guild. Use all our newfangled gold to buy some um, some new weapons. We, we're we getting like a bow that's basically going to carry us through the whole game. And a sword that we would normally use for like a whole bunch of the game, but we're literally only going to use it like once. So, hello friend. You come to the right place. So we're gonna sell our sword and bow just so we can have it all equipped and ready. Do, 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 do. Yesterday, I saw twin flames. Finally, head this way. So there's another dude here with a blue mushroom. So we're just gonna. Kill him there as well. 
again, there's like another mini quest where he confesses his love for someone and you can give a note to them or you can say, oh no, I wrote the note and all that, but that's slow. This literally came from an idea from someone in chat. I was like, I did one stream where I just rooted the whole game and some guy was like, dude, why don't you just kill the guy? It's like, that's a really good point. Thank you. And I really wish I would rem I, I'd remembered his name, but thank you so much to that guy. If there's any, if, if there's anything else you want to read out, go ahead. Okay, we have a ten dollar donation from Walhoon saying, "Love for ESA. I just discovered there's another speedrunning marathon. I love speedrunning and especially the events with great commentary, great cause as well. Love for the kids." We got a five dollar donation from KJ Freshly saying, "You chase chickens." Do chase chickens. It is true. And we have a ten dollar donation from. Elio Tor saying good luck. Thank you. So I think this is the last fishing we're going to be doing for like. Decent, yeah, like 10 minutes, thank God. Fishing is like one of the least favorite parts of my. The only thing I hate more is the pub games. Mostly just because I'm bad at both of them. So we got another blue mushroom. We're gonna turn on our lamp. We got Oh, this demon door. Sorry, wants us to light it up. So. I'm gonna head back to Oakvale to do the bandit camp quest. So normally, in any percent, when you do this quest, you would actually go straight to the area and you would use a trick called summon clipping to clip through the gate which would um, save a bunch of time and skip like most of the quest but unfortunately the issue is that if you ever come back to the area the game will like try and start a quest that doesn't exist anymore and then the game will soft lock and then it's terrible so obviously we're going to come back to this area later so we can't do that so we'll just do it nice and legit but there are a lot of things we need to do on the way anyway so it's not all bad Sneak past the so the guildmaster is saying, oh yeah, sneak past these guys. We're going to run past this guy, pretend he's not there. And then we're just going to kill the other guys. Thank God we don't actually have to do any real sneaking, because it'd be terrible. I like how he whistles after he's dead. Also, fun little fact, he's actually whistling the Fable theme, which is kind of a nice touch, I think. <clears throat> right then, so we're just picking up all these chests which have like bandit gear in them, which we need for like two, two things, so. pick up that one there after everyone hits me and it's terrible <coughs> right then. so last two here also it's funny these bandits like Half the AI still wants to like greet you, so sometimes they will like walk past you for like everything well here and then just like hit you. Oh wow, they are really going to town. Go wear my bandit gear now. Alright, so as this guy very kindly points out, we've got very nice bandit gear, so he opens the gate, and this would be normally a gate you would clip in any percent, but sadly, no such luck here. So I'm actually going to eat one of my moonfishes change to night time to bring these guys Looking to make a purchase? Or you think back we can to life. Special offer for you, sir. And we're also going to excuse me, drop by here and pick up another potion. I'm sorry, I've got a cough that just won't go away. I 
hopefully that got away with it. And here is literally the scariest part of the run for me. Not here. In a second. So get a pass from this guy. And once all these guys buzz off. This guy here, this is spot the addition, and it's basically just He's gonna hide, uh, show you three items. He's gonna hide the thing and say, okay, what's been added? So in this case, it's tree, fish, sword, and he adds a new item every time. It's not in the same order, and it's completely random over train. Tree, fish, sword, so grave. Won the round. And there's five rounds of this, and the last round I always choke on. So potion, boo, valverine, apple, potion, boo, valverine, apple. Also, if you've got a time limit, potion, boo, valverine, apple. You won the round. That's round two. So that's boot, grey, or boot, skull, head, sword, apple. You Three. Won the round. One more, and I'm going to be honest, I, I didn't say this in my submissions, but I'm actually going to do this tool as this is. So potion, tree, mushroom, sword, hob, head, I'm probably going to screw this up. Potion, tree, mushroom, sword, hob. You won the round. Okay, so the last one, I'm literally just going to take a picture of it on my phone because apparently I'm doing this tool assisted, so I really hope that came out okay, otherwise it's going to be embarrassing. So, do, 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 what has been added? I want to say it's this guy. You okay, no, wow, I'm so good at the game. I definitely didn't just use my phone and took a picture of it. Anyway, moving on. That is literally the scariest part of the run over, so I'm happy. And we're just going to pay these assassins to open the gate. Well done. The gate is open. You can go to Twinblade's area now. Right, so Twinblade here is the big bad boss and his little gimmick is that he can't, he can't really be damaged until he jams his swords into the ground. Stand by one. So we're gonna, he's just basically operates on a timer, so we're just gonna do whatever in the meantime. And see if I can get a trick here. Nope. Come on, play nice. We're gonna jam his swords into the ground. Ah, oh, I didn't get it. So if you get there, it's like pretty precise timing. You can actually um, kill him in one cycle, but two cycles isn't too bad. I've seen so many. She hasn't seen anything, she's blind. So spoiler alert, the big bad boss of the game cut out her eyes, so. There we go, quest done. So what we are also gonna do here, this is the third round of fist fights, and when I said we're gonna break the game, what we're gonna do, we're gonna find one of these buddies here. This guy here. You have we're gonna make him follow us. Yes. I'll come back. This guy's gonna follow us, so obviously we can only use our fist, that makes sense. They didn't really check to see anyone else using anything else, so we are going to just completely cheese this, so it's gonna start. It's one on one, but when this guy arrives, a new challenger approaches and he is just going to do that and just, he actually might kill one of them, but basically he's just gonna, yeah, that guy's dead, rip. So now we're literally just cheesing the fist fighters and letting a uh, bandit friend kill them for us, which saves a bunch of time. Yeah, that guy's dead as well. Completely broken. Shoutouts to uh, David Arnold for this strat, actually. And last one. Oh no, seconds last. Let's see if that gets with my cough. I'll take care of you. Brilliant. We did it completely legitly. 
never mind the two dead bodies on the floor. Anyway. <clears throat> if there's any, anything you want to read out now, go ahead. All right, we have a $25 donation from Simon Wickland saying, let's get this bidding challenge started. You gotta understand, the world needs to see the secret challenge room. We have a $10 donation from Celtic Dave saying, hey Atem, good luck with the Lost Chapters run, but I know your true love is anniversary. Thank you so much, Dave. It's very kind of you. We have a five dollar donation from Dante Dust saying all this rolling is making tech nervous. We are scared you might crash again. Anything can happen, anything can happen, it's payable. And we have a one hundred twenty five dollar donation from Limp007 saying hey there, it's my first time here watching ESA, but it's not my first speedrun marathon. It is cool to see this in Europe as well. Money goes to save Whisper. Greetings from Germany. Oh, thank you so much. This bid war just got interesting. So this demon door here is actually required as part of the story. Normally you'd clip it through it in any percent. We're just going to avoid that. Um, but we have to do it legitly, sadly, and you have to hit these stones and spell out his name, so it's hit, so it's H-I-T-S. And there's a little easter egg if you spell out the word shit with it. Um, two battle things with like these werewolf things spawn and like as like punishment for being being rude. So here's the archaeologist. So fun fact, that guy actually used to be a um, a trophy dealer, so like early on in the game, he used to just sell trophies. I don't know why, but like I found out by like modding um, to you, modding him in as an NPC and he just like, Oh, I am the trophy dealer. It's like oh no, you're not. You you're the archaeologist. Now. There's an important quest card waiting for you. It seems not whole blade is in some trouble. <laughs> All right. So, That's silver key. Check the guild for more quests. So coming up here is the Temple of Avo and we are going to, so basically the idea is that the more gold you donate the more you get back so you get good points and if you donate enough you actually get a sword, well a, a great maze but I call it a sword, I call it a sword, but um, if you have to donate a whole bunch like 50k or something and we're Welcome gonna donate it but not really so we're just gonna start donating but we're gonna do a little glitch here where if there's a short delay between donating it and the money actually being taken. So if we reinteract with this thing here, we'll actually just not donate any gold. So we're basically going to get a free weapon. The god. So then we're just going to donate a single gold piece. And there we go, free weapon. So what I'm actually going to do here. I'm gonna go equip that new free weapon and remove that from my slot. If there's anything else you want to read out here as well, go ahead. While you skipped the donation, I got a real donation, and that's from Silver Phoenix, say uh, $20, and says, This made me buy Anniversary, a love fable. Good luck. Thank you so much, and Anniversary is a very good, especially as a speed game, it's very good. Um, it's got a lot of tech in it. If you're interested, you can check out the Fable Discord, and there's always people who want to help. Sorry. Uh, so n the nymph here, which is like li little giggling thing you see, um, is actually the fastest enemy in the game. Like she can run from one side of the map to the other. Luckily, she's not aggroed onto me, but um, she's pretty annoying. And just before you head back to the guild, we're gonna just hit this demon door with an arrow to open it. Here's the bathrooms I was talking about. We'll run into a lot of those in the next quest. 
Um, you can actually use anything for it that, like, you can use a fireball or whatever, but just... Oh, hello? Cool, so that's open. I like how each little demon door has, like, its own little area and, like, its own little fancy gimmick or whatever. Kind of cool. It could have literally just been it opened and there was just nothing but a chest, but they put in the extra effort and that was nice of them. Guild, pick up you. And we'll go ahead back to Knothole Glade. So we're going to start the White Barvering quest, and that's just like a big bad boss we have to fight. <coughs> right then. So, let's find my phone later. So we kill that guy, and then we just look away, and then the other one spawns. It actually took us an embarrassingly long amount of time to realize that you had to look away. We just thought it was around. It was like, oh, we lose a bunch of time here. Why? It's like, oh, you just look away. It's that easy. Hey! We're just zapping the bar in there because he just needs 10 hits from anything. Also, we're just going to kill this lady because she always gets in the way. Oh, no. And then we can cancel his animation by hitting him with an arrow. That just saves a bit of time. Also, I think I made this hu that woman's husband really angry and he wants to kill me now. Yeah, he's running towards me. He's got a vendetta. Don't understand why. Just before the white barbering runs over, we're gonna dig up a silver key here. Was it just going to do a quick key check to make sure I've got all... 14, yeah. Perfect. So we've got a silver augmentation, which is basically the only thing that can really damage the barbering, because, like, he only takes 10% of the damage from anything else. The silver augmentation does triple damage, so you do a whole bunch. And it also stacks up on top of itself, so if you've got two in a bow, it'll actually do nine times, and three you do... Uh, 27 times, which is just like absolutely absurd. Like nine times is already enough to like one hit him. Yep. Hero, your will energy is low. So it's pretty important we don't get hit. It's not as important as in any percent, but we go put up our physical shield, which is this like glowy thing, and that just means that any health we we take. We instead be taken from our mana pool, and most importantly, it stops our combat multiplier from dropping. So it's quite handy as a to use in a fight. So we're just going to snipe this guy here, go spawn some buddies, and then we'll just kill the rest of those guys. And we didn't quite kill him, that's really weird. Normally I would. He literally had 20 health left. If I held it back for like half a second more, I would have gone in. So we're just going to kill all these annoying dudes here. It just gives us a little bit of XP. Cool, and then we're going to head back to Not Hold Blade and hand in our quest. I'm also going to check if a guy is here. This isn't normally done in the run, but I want to show something off a little bit later. But So he is here, so... What we're going to do, we're going to put back on some clothing. Check the guild for more quests. And get a custom back tattoo. So this is actually a really underused feature in this game called custom tattoos, where you can normally you can just get tattoos, and you can actually edit a tattoo to have anything you want on it, and then and then it will just show up in game. So I won't tell you what I've got, but you'll see later. Another pub game. We're going to use slow time to actually cheese this mini game and slow it down so we have more time to do it because it's actually a pretty tight timing and like. 
the clicks don't register properly sometimes, so you don't want to rush yourself. I mean, it is a speed run, but you know what I mean. Um, if there's anything you want to read out, go ahead. We have a $5 donation from Eliotar saying, $5 missing, love from Paquette, restream. Thank you very much. And a quick reminder that the bit war currently is Safe Whisper at $220, followed by Kill Whisper with $75. Up, and safe or abandon the prisoners currently in the lead is save the prisoners with fifty-five dollar, right. followed by abandon the prisoners with twenty dollars. How's the glitch exhibition getting on actually? We are currently at one hundred fifty dollars of five hundred. Get donating for that, guys. So last round here. Ace four. I knew I was going to miss one. You know what, I'm going to... Yeah, alright. Let's try this again. That's like a minute lost. Last round as well. I even looked for a minute, I was like, ah, oh, I know there's one missing, but I just went for it. I don't know. There's worse ones to choke on, definitely. The um, Spot the Edition one that I was um, talking about earlier. In practice once, I literally failed it, like, 20 times over and it was just absolutely tragic. Four, five, six, seven, seven. If there's anything else you want to read as well, go ahead. There's literally nothing else going on here. Oh, especially not now. Okay. Uh, we'd like to take this opportunity and thank some of our partners, the City of Malmö, for supporting the event, allowing the event to come to a hotel for the first time. We also would like to thank Topman Interactive. for uh, It's a Swedish game development firm. They are currently working at their first solo AAA title called Immortal Unchained, which will be released during 2018. Um, we also like to thank Domino's Pizza for supporting the event with pizzas for all the volunteers twice a day. So thanks to all the sponsors. Chicken chicken. Shout outs. Chicken right, let's hope I get it right this time. So five, I'm good. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. Sometimes I get really lucky and just have like two or like two or three like pairs and I can just Plays through super easily. So, ace, two, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. I really shouldn't have put up slow time. I said, oh, it's risky and stuff, but I, I would have been able to just do a whole bunch more attempts. So, ace, three, four, six, eight, nine, queen. There we go. That literally wasn't hard at all, but I. It could have been worse, it could have been worse. Right. Excuse me, friends. So stay legal, I'm just going to nick this book from this house and head back to the guild. So I've got a couple more spells which are going to help me out here a whole bunch. So first one is Berserk, which makes us red and angry and like that. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase our attacking damage, attacking and rolling speed. We'll knock things down when we attack them. Um, we can potentially behead people and just all sorts of stuff. So it makes us move faster. We're going to use it with Assassin's and Rolling to go really fast. And the other thing we've got is actually force push. So force push, it seems like a bit of a weird choice for a speed run, because all it does is just knock enemies back. But first of all, it's good for crowd control, so it means you can knock stuff back and give you breathing room to rush. And the other thing 
is that there is a bit of a bug with it where obviously you'll push something, it'll do damage, thus giving you combat multiplier. But there was never a check to see if the thing you're pushing is alive or not. So what you can do is you can force push dead bodies on the floor and get a whole bunch of combat multiplier, which we will be doing in this quest, uh, Hop Killing Contest, which has Whisper in it. We're, we're not going to kill Slash Sparrow just yet, but we're just going to humiliate her first. And just before that, we'll just do a quick spot of fishing. Never a bad time to fish. So basically the goal here is we want to just kill as many hobs as possible and force push them as close together as possible. You can see our combat multiplier like going up so we're already at 14. See if they're clumped together you get a good chunk of it. It's already at 20, we're almost past our best for combat multiplier. And this is just going to be this for the next two and a bit minutes. Also, you get to hear this voice line from uh, Whisper a whole bunch. Oh, apparently she doesn't want to say it. What's going to steal all her kills? Normally, she's like the person who steals all your kills. Yeah, that's my kill, thank you. So, ideally, we want to get to about 55 to 60 multiplier. Whether we'll get that or not, it's We'll see, but so far so good. It seems you've mastered using. You won't wait for me, will you? Hero, your will energy is low. Right, hello, friends. If there's any, if there's anything else you want to shout, just go ahead. We have a five dollar donation from Anonymous saying welcome to Momo. Thank you. The whisper just broke my shield there, which could have been very disastrous. Because when you get hit you actually lose a whole bunch of multiply. It goes down to like the last multiple says. You'll go down to either 40, 20, 10, 5, or 0. Basically, as you can imagine, with a whole bunch, can get a bit, a bit painful. chunk of combat multiplier which is going to make the next quest arena a whole bunch quicker. I really apologize for this voice line. Oh here's a big dude here. Oh god, whisper please. So I'd like to point out that I've gotten 48 kills, she's not gotten a single one. There's like a boast you can do, which is like, oh yeah, get 10 more kills. I think we've surpassed that just a teeny weeny bit. So we got 62, which is an absolutely insane amount. So, we gonna use all our potions there. So we've now got like 120k XP or something crazy. And gonna head back to the guild now. And use all that newfangled XP to buff we ourselves out for the arena. Oh, yeah, I should probably take those quests at some point, that'd be a good idea. Uh, so, Zeke 5 and Zeke 6. And that. So, we're going to just try and max out Iron Flame, which is bonkers at this point of the game. That. 
I'm just gonna go for what I, whatever I, I want, and then if I can't afford stuff, I'll undo it later. I'll do. So we go stick in flame over there. We go move everything else, and we go put someone on four different keys, which I will explain a little later. And then actually take the quest. That would be a good idea to not forget to do. Just on our way to arena, I guess I'll explain what, um, what all the summons are for. So Hero, basically summon, use it, it spawns a little thing to fight for you. Um, the important things are it gives you 3 XP every time you use it times your multiplier. So in this case I've got 7, so I'd get uh, 21 quick maths um, from that. But it also has zero cooldown and you can set it to multiple keys. So you'd imagine if I'm pressing four different keys all like mad, then I'm going to get a whole bunch of XP, which is how we're going to um, go through the arena. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes. Pick up a couple of things from this trader, some potions, some augmentations, we can do a offer and some new armor actually. And also a doll. You can actually just get that doll for free, which is, well, not for free, but like you don't have to do a mini game for it, which might as well be free to me. So there's these two guards here. This is the guy we'll need to sp speak to after, so we've got a minute timer. Uh, um, so we're just going to push him because when that timer finishes, we'll need to speak to him. So rather than us running out, we're just going to give him a few love taps. Maybe force push him a little bit. Ow. Ow. friend. It's all right. He'll understand. What is your problem? That's fine. Everyone else is like petrified of me now. So I'm gonna wanna stick him in this corner over here. And every time his mouth every time he moves you can see his, his mouth moving as well. It's absolutely lovely. Luckily I don't need to talk to that guy, because that's just blackjack, so I'd just literally be pure RNG, but luckily that's not part of hundred percent because you don't get any reward for it. Chuck us over a beer, will you? And then he's fine, see, no problem at all. So here comes the arena. So this will be where we kill our spare whisper. Um, it's not inside soon, we've got another like nine minutes, so we won't cut it off just yet. So you can see I come out of it just going through the roof right now. The effort we went through last time to get like 60 multiplier, we just passed that. You can see our XP going through the roof as well. Here's the Hobbs, they go down in one hit with a flame, so we can just sort of do that and they're all dead. The other thing Course Push can do is actually cancel death animations, which is quite nice. So like some enemies with really long animations, like the white barbary and stuff, uh, can just be mitigated. Oh, that was almost really bad, but we saved it. That way you be dead. Thank you. In the sudden big 100. There we go.
If there's anything else you want to read out, go ahead. By the way. We have a $50 donation from Anonymous saying, favorite glitches, please. Good shout, thank you very much. And then, so Whisper is here, unfortunately. First thing we're going to do is knock her in that direction. The only useful thing we can do is that we can skip the announcer's dialogue at the end of every wave uh, by talking to her, so that's the one use she has. Also, here's a white Balverine. He's dead now. So you can see just how powerful two silver mutations are in a bow. So he literally went down in a second. I'm actually going to turn down the game volume a little bit now because we're going to start summon spamming now and it is quite loud. I'll do. You can see, I'll just do this. Uh, yeah, crap ton of XP. Let's see how much we got from that. Yeah, we got 46,000 just from that little bit of tapping alone. Please, thank you. Come on. Three. Go. Oh, that guy's killing himself. That's fine. So while I'm here, I'm also going to do something I should have done right at the start of the game and turn off the Guildmaster. We're going to sleep now, thank you very much. Uh, Go help our little wasp friend here. So you can see we just skipped that dialogue there. That alone probably saves like two or three minutes. It's quite insane. I'm gonna actually have our summon here try and kill this dude. Come on. Whisper, don't sit. Whisper, you. Go on. Alright. We'll save it for later. Basically, I want uh, our wasp friend to kill one of these guys to take on the form of it. So, if you can do that, that'd be jolly kind of you. There we go. Literally wasn't that hard. Intrepid 
that's one throw dead. And another throw dead. So here's the rock trolls. We're actually going to do a little cool strat we found pretty recently. What we're going to do is, as I said before, when you're in Berserk, the more damage you take, the more damage you deal. So um, just standing in there for a little bit increases your damage by a whole bunch. So these guys just to go down super quickly, like so. And that guy's dead. Um, what is the status of the kill save whisper incentive? Because now's probably the best time to close it. Because it's only about two minutes away from now. Oh, wow. this. The current state on um, kill or safe whisper is safe whisper with two hundred twenty dollars. Oh, there you go. Not bad. So we're doing the faster strat for this. Try right, whisper. You'll live another day. Maybe not another, another run. Go this way, thank you. Oh, all my keys are messed up. Am I? doing a weird cycle here where sometimes you'll do this and sometimes you'll instantly dive and yeah. The Arachnons is not fun. Any runner can confirm this. Also I've got some insane multiplayer. Let me just double check my XP. I'm probably like well over. No, I've got still a bit to go. And he's dead. Let's carry on. Come on. All right, Whisper, you're being saved here, so knock you down and hit you in the back. And then hopefully hit you in the back once more. And there you go. So we can either choose to kill or spare here. We're going to spare her as per the donations. Thank you very much for all of your kind donations. My dear lady, it was me. That was unbelievable. And that's the arena done. Oh, hello, Windows. You have reached. Nice little cameo from Windows 10 there. Shout outs. And let's go to. Guild, so we're, we've got like a million XP, so we're gonna max out nearly everything. We, I would say everything, but there's like three things we can't get because we're not evil enough. But we'll um, we'll save those for later. So what we're gonna do just max out everything. Health increases. If you've got anything else you want to read out, go ahead. Take. This is a pretty good time. Toughness makes you more resistant to damage. Uh, we want to remind you of some upcoming bit wars still. Left Guile and that save or abandon the prisoners with saving the prisoners currently in the lead with $55, followed by abandoning with $20. We gil still got the glitch showcase, uh, a couple of bucks that we need, and we're currently on $200 from $500. And a little Taking this a little bit beforehand, we have a donation going towards Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance HD with Rebel Dragon wants to fight Julius as level 1. We got $25 donation uh, from 500 until right now. So keep those donations coming in. Keep them coming. And that is basically everything. You can see we just completely bulked up now because we maxed out our stats. So um, we're going to do a little quest here, Trader Massacre. And this is, we actually upgraded stuff first just because 
this is an evil quest, and if we was to do this before, we wouldn't be good enough to max out some of our spells, so we just do it now and save later. It's exactly what you think, you just kill a bunch of traders and guards. A lot of people think that you can only do either Trader Massacre or Trader Rescue, but you can actually do both, it's like completely different quests. These guys all go down in a single hit. I think it's just guards left now. That's a little Monty Python reference there. So both those guys' heads are gone. Any of you guys? And then we can choose to either, either kill or spare this guy. It literally makes nearly zero difference at all. It's pretty pointless. This one's just slightly quicker. And you get to see that amazing face. Go ahead to the Grey House, um, where our sister's there, and she's going to provide us with some story about how our mother's been taken prisoner, and you need to go talk to this dude and go to this place, and blah blah blah. Also, while we're here, we're going to do a little mini quest. Doors are difficult, apparently. But that's not. Mini quest done, and... We're going to pick up a chest here. This is like one of the more obscure silver chests. It's like, it's very easy to miss. And back to the guild again. So before we do any more story, we actually go head o over to Oakville and do some more side quests, just like tick off because we've done barely anything in terms of side quests. So this next one here is pretty, it's pretty fun to watch. So again, shout outs to David Arnold for this strat, absolute legend. But um, just go pick up some potions here. So this is Trader Rescue we'll be doing, and it's literally just we take a trader from one side of the map to the other. But he runs really slow and he's very scared of the bandits and stuff. So we're going to actually. Um, do a little trick to uh, to speed him along, yeah, speed him along a bit. So we're gonna just swap these around. Where are we? Heal life, force push. Knock the arrow, and where? Ah, uh, I just got rid of slow time. I did this in practice as well. It's like I need to make sure not to do that. I did it anyway. Oh, I should also probably speak to this dude. Also, these traders are like petrified of me while I'm in Berserk, but it's fine. They'll understand. I come out and they're alright. Another little mini quest. This guy has an assassin brother and he wants him written out of the inheritance, so we have to kill him. It's like a goody baddie, but not quite sort of thing. Pretty easy stuff. Right, so this is the area here. If we was to summon clip in any percent, this is where the game would crash. So we're going to try and avoid it. We've already had one crash. We don't need any more. Thank you very much. So here's trader number one. He's going to lead us a little bit. And then we basically need to go from one side of the map to the other. Going back, obviously, with the trader in hand. Follow me. So again, force push knocks things back. It's pretty straightforward stuff. So just gonna use force push as a breathing room, and just gonna pretend all these guys aren't here. So here is the trader. Help. So rather than making him follow us, we're just gonna instead just push him in the direction we want with force push. Uh, this way, friend, and just 
keep him top every so often. I hope you like that voice line. Just keep pushing him until he... Oh god. It's a bit scary. So in practice, I I launched him onto a rock somehow, then onto another rock, and then he launched completely out of bounds, and I couldn't get him out, so I lost like five minutes. Probably get some good air here. Yeah, it was I think somewhere here. So this way. Don't mind me, bandit. There you go. There's your brother. A little bit worse for wear, but he'll do. So I'm going to teleport now to uh, Twin Blades Camp to do Trader Rescue, which is just like you get three traders, you bring them to the exit, kill everything in your path. Easy peasy. So we're gonna come back to that guy later. We'll pick up everyone else first and then pick this guy up on the way back just to save us a little bit of stress. Sadly, we're not force pushing these guys because these guys are really like squishy, so they'll. And plus, these guys are attacking as well, so we don't want them to die. Yeah, that jolly good. I just think you're going. He's going to sleep now. Right, come on, friend. That bloody heroes went all the treasure. Oh yeah, another feature of Berserk I haven't even mentioned is the fact that you literally can't die in it. Like even if you're at zero health, you'll just keep taking 10 damage but never actually die. It's quite handy. This guy has a habit of not actually following you at all. You can see the little face mark above these guys to show them show that they're following. There you go. It's just these guys here. They're having a little party over here. Wow. I wasn't invited. Right, come on then, lads. Oh shit. Quest done, nice and easy. We'll just head back in for a little bit to um, deal with that guard thing that we was looking at earlier. If you got anything you want to read out, go ahead. We have five dollar donation from Link Boss saying just want to say don't be fooled. The guys in, with the Swedish flag in the audience aren't actually Swedish. Oh, I know, I've been baited before. It's easily done. Thank you, Link. We're gonna attack him. And then we go take his bribe and then we go kill him anyway. Because we like that. So back to Oakville again, I forgot this in practice, literally I was at right at the end of the run and I just checked my quest like, oh yeah, I forgot that, so come back to it this time, come back to it. Quest done, nice CT. 
speaking of quests done, this next quest is going to be done extremely quickly. I would say it's the fastest quest in the game, but that would be a lie, because there's one coming up soon that is uh, even quicker. All right then, so, here's the deal. So, we're going to skip all these cutscenes. We're then going to use a summon creature. Play nice. I'm gonna try and clip out. You might just try. You know what, I'll just open it normally. It's still a really quick quest regardless. You're going to take them on all but so we need to do is just kill all these guys. Oh, excuse me friend, come back. Wow, I've never had one of them get away before. That's rude. There we go, quest done in... Not as quickly as I'd like, but it's done regardless. So back to Witchwood Colorscape. We gotta do a couple of bits and pieces, one of which is the final round of Fist Fighters. We have learned that Twinblade is seeking revenge for his humiliating defeat. He has hired a band of highly skilled assassins to kill you. Watch out for surprise attacks. Your prowess is an archer is impressive hero. You should try your skill at the archery range near not old blade. As the guild master kindly points out, so we've got now we've got assassins that want to kill us. Here's one here. And um there's a couple of these guys littered throughout the land and we need to kill them all for a treasure clue. And then we also got the archery competition. And when we say competition, um, the owner is going to be competing with his life, actually. We're just going to kill him for the uh, reward. So we're just going to open the chest in here. And then we're going to get one of those guard friends to follow us. Open this chest here. Blimp. So what we're actually gonna do, we're gonna do a, li it's a little bit of a detour, but it's, it's to make stuff faster, follow. so we're gonna make this right. fella follow us. Away, this guy's gonna be like, oh, help my wife, we don't actually need Please. to do this quest. Um, it's not actually even a quest, it's just like a, a little side thing, but it's not part of 100%. So this guy is gonna be following us, so we're gonna head back to Not Whole Glade, pick up a few things along the way. So there's the sword in the stone up here, which requires you need to have maxed out um, strength stats, or you can try it once and then upgrade it a whole bunch, and then you and then you get it. Which is good. Kill all the uh, other guys trying, because otherwise you have to wait for ages and it's terrible. It's alright, our guard didn't see anything. We're fine. We're completely clean, legit in his eyes. Um, if you want to read out anything, go ahead. Just while I'm going through this area. So sadly we do actually have to walk through this area normally, we can't teleport through otherwise our guard friend won't follow us but it's fine. It's like literally only this area then and everything else has benefits. Another assassin's gonna spawn, we'll deal with him. Dead. So the reason we brought this guard all the way along here is for the final round of fist fighters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the round and then I'm gonna make him wait. So we'll be doing a similar thing that we did earlier, but the issue is this time the guard attacks super fast, so you end up like soft locking the quest completely because like you kill them before the round starts also i'm gonna put this back on just for a little bit you're supposed um, to stay inside let's go you're here supposed to stay inside go make him wait ring. you're supposed to stay inside the ring come on wait you're supposed to stay 
So we're going to make him wait until the last round, which is the uh, Chieftain. And he ha he takes like 50 hits or something crazy. So everything else we can just punch normally. Um, it's just to prevent the risk of soft locking the quest because it can happen really often. It's terrible. It's like not worth the uh, potential time save. You're supposed to stay inside the ring. Is this a good time to, uh, to, to announce something? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we'd just like to tell you that the $500 donation for the glitch incentive has been met. Blimey, wow. Uh, the $300 donation that came in, uh, came with a comment. Did you know that wow backwards spells wow? Wow. Wow, that's wow. amazing. You know what else is amazing? Glitch showcases. Brilliant. This donation was made from Owen Wilson's cat, Kev. Oh, keys. Car keys. Car keys. I can't go. read, so I'm that's sorry. Right. I'll let you get back to the run. Yeah, thank you very much. That's that's meant the glitch exhibition has been met, and stay tuned for that in about an hour and a half because oh, there's okay. some there's some interesting stuff in there, right? Follow me, friends. Wow. Okay, that was pretty dangerous. You can only take two hits from him. You do. You have to do 50. But sorry, our guard friend is helping. You can see how legit we are, right? That's that done. And just before we go, this co archery competition owner is no longer around. I like how every time we break the law, a guard will say something to us like, stay within the law, and we're just like, nah, we're good. All right, where are we even going next? All right, Bowstone. So that's meant we haven't had to do the archery competition, which is good, because that's like a minute minimum, and we have to do it like two or three times. So we're going to eat the golden carrots so it's daytime. Oh, hello there. So we can now go into Bowstone North. Um, there's absolutely no way you can get in there earlier without a glitch, which you might see in the glitch exhibition, maybe. So while we're in Bowstone North, this very prestigious part of Bowstone, we're going to pick up this book. No one sees us. And we're also going to get the sword we go use for the rest of the game. The Solus Great Sword is objectively the best sword in the game. If you think every, anything else is better, you are wrong. Um, I'm going to sell the bow. Great Sword, get the Solus Great Sword. It does the most amount of DPS with Berserk and Multi Strike and everything. So, there you go. You won, and you allowed the powerful Whisper to live. Just reminding us of your kind donations there. The game is very self aware. Also, I missed that split. There we go. So now, all of those books we got a million years ago, we are now going to hand in, and hopefully we get all of them. If not, I'm going to have to go on a hunt to see which one I miss. There's 25 of them, and any of them could be missing. It's always it's always a stressful point to hope that you've um, you've gotten them all. So, fun little drinking game for those at home. Every time this guy says today, or clears his throat, take a drink. So that's one. Disclaimer, do not do this because I do not want to be responsible for any deaths because you will you will not survive this. There's 25 of these bad boys. So if you've got any donations, I'd really love to heal them right now. We like to use the opportunity and uh, remind you of some bit incentives that are still going on and one is still the save for abandoned the prisoners oh, yeah. we currently have saved prisoners in the lead with 65 dollars followed by abandoning the prisoners with 20 dollars we also have some other incentives going on like uh the fuck to any percent run for uh, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. English Ben will show off the any percent category of Tony Hawk's Underground 2 after his run. Currently $50 of 500 And we have the incentive still going on. Uh, it's a $1,000 goal to reach. It's an actual Beyblade fight. Uh, Leonard underscore and friends will let it rip live. Uh, it will be held right after or just before the Beyblade V Force Ultimate Blader Jam run. 
Brilliant. Shout out to my boy English Ben as well. Bye. If you don't, do if you don't want to donate towards Fable, donate towards Thug. Today. So here's where all the todays start coming in. Today's lesson. So uh, this is the point where you, if you were drinking along, you'd be passing out about now. Today. Yeah, you can see. But what about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Today. Ah. Uh, I think there's only a couple more to hand in, and then we're done with this godforsaken twin blade. I want to say this is the last one or second the last. Of blood. Second last. Look, everyone, it's the last. Ah. Yes, we got it. Okay. This. I can breathe for at least a minute. We got a silver key. That's the toughest silver key to get in the game, and there is actually um, a thing you can do where if you save while on a quest, um, you can keep all your items that like just lose your ah, yes. progress in the quest, so you can get like multiple silver keys. Um, I would love to do that for that one, but it also counts as a quest, so we have to do it. Unfortunately, so win some, lose some. Took a hand in the uh, potion to this lady, and also like that witch. It turned out she had the potion all along. She just wanted the mushrooms for her own nefarious purposes. It's like, oh, I had the potion the whole time. It's like, oh, I'm sure you did. So come up here. We've also got to activate a mini side quest, and we've got a little cameo from some someone you. People may find familiar. We've actually got Alex Jones here in Fable. Finally. This is Alex Jones. He's um he loves yes, his conspiracy finally. theories. Um he's concerned about turning the damn heroes gay or something. But um yeah, he's actually part of a conspiracy theory which is that the mayor of Bowstone, who we will oh, eventually be marrying, um killed her sister to um become mayor. Which spoiler it turns out to be true, so uh, Make of that what you will, but yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna rush to avoid all the, the only minions we need to kill. There's only like three we need to kill. Uh, go dig up here. There's two silver keys in this map. Brings us up to 18. Just go up and down that to trigger the uh, assassin trip here. You dead? Yeah, thank you. Also, want to pick up that golden carrot for later. Alright, so this is the last area. You've got, you've actually got two timers going on here. So there's the one you can see here, which counts down from five minutes, and then there's also a hidden timer in the background, which only counts to about 30 seconds. And after the 30 second mark, you have to kill everything in the map to trigger the end of the quest. If you get it before 30 seconds, you need to kill these last two dudes. And there you go. Job done. So jumping back to the guild real quick, we'll pick up some potions, pick up some quests. Oh, 
pleased to serve you. So we've got plenty of potions now. This next uh, side quest we're doing is uh, where's the bathroom? There we go. Is execution tree, and there's two sides to this quest. There's the good side, which is you escort the prisoner to get executed, and there's like some guards, and they provide banter, and they you walk along with them, and then every so often some bandits attack. Or there's the evil side, which is you just rush to the end and kill the um, kill the executioner, and then the prisoner's like, oh, thanks, mate, and they just sort of walks off. Um, we're actually doing the good side for reasons you'll see in a minute. So this quest is quite broken. Um, in the, obviously, at the end of the quest, the executioner will kill the uh, the prisoner, and the guard here even says, "Oh, don't even think about killing the prisoner. The only person who's touching him is the executioner himself." However, we killed this dude. He's dead, and oh no, quest failed. But no, quest completed. So yeah, they they didn't actually do a check to see. All they checked is. Is the is the uh, prisoner alive? So everything else doesn't even matter. So that quest is done. So that is what I was, what I was talking about of the fastest quest in the game. That was like five seconds or something. So um, I actually found that out completely by accident when I was doing like a semi-casual playthrough. I was like about here doing the good side of the quest. I think a stray ar a stray arrow or something hit him and killed him. And then it said quest completed. I was really confused. I saw his dead body on the floor. So I tried it again, killing him, and sure enough it worked, so three minutes saved. So this is Litchfield Graveyard here, it's probably one of the more annoying parts, especially of any percent. So I guess I, it's a good time to talk about it now, so there's a potential skip here called um, Graveyard Skip. So basically the goal here is we need to get four pieces of Nostro, who's like a dead dude's gear, and then give it to him, and we have to go all the way through the map here. Um, but there's a demon door there, and you can clip it, and you can go through it, and you can finish the rest of the quest. However, something oh, along the li somewhere along the line, uh, it goes wrong, because oh, when you try and leave the area, it's like, oh, you're still on the quest, you can't leave this area yet. So obviously that's no good. So there is a $150 bounty on that. If you can find a way to skip the pr this part of the graveyard, you will be the winner of $150. So uh, get your get your thinking caps on. So here's the first silver key. Um, there's actually three silver keys in really close proximity proximity which is really weird so there's one here's the second one and the third one is right here so it's pretty easy this is probably like a point where the devs like oh we need some more keys it's like oh put them somewhere they just suck them all close to each other So technically, this is actually the only bit of fishing we need to do in any percent. Um, so it's doubly so that we'd want to skip it because fishing is terrible and RNG and all of that and no one likes it. So here's Nostro. He's going to complain about his arm. And if there's any donations you want to read, go ahead. We have a $10 donation from Anonymous saying much love. Much love. Much love. And we want to take this opportunity and thank our sponsors. Um, We'd like to thank Twitch for being a strong supporter of speedrunning in our community. Also, we'd like to thank Sigma IT Consulting for uh, Sigma loves gaming and making a difference and supporting ESA was a core value of Sigma. Also, we'd like to thank Elgato for supporting ESA for the past three events already. And this year with three, four streaming parts 
on the back of the main streaming room, allowing antennas to stay connected with the community and bring the com their community up to a part of ESA. Thank you. Thank you. Very kind of them. So I just need to jump in this circle here and then a whole bunch of undead spawn. And the gimmick is like, they can only be harmed while they're in the circle, so... You get circle energy. So somewhere along the line, the Grave Keeper died. I was going to make a joke about him being dead on the inside, but I can't, sadly. Come on, any time today. That's one. That's me, buddy. We're actually going to slow time here and then just inflame them. The reason we slow time is just so that they don't pull out the circle and then we lose time. So coming up is the the uh, boring part of the run, I guess, which is prison, and nobody nobody likes prison. Also, the Kraken's here, and he's gone. He shouldn't be here yet. He um, joined a bit too early. So prison is just it's there's really nothing to it. You're literally going to an area, waiting for a few minutes, doing a race, doing a little mini game, and then repeating it again, and then coming back out the way you came. There's nothing else to it. I was going to try a little fancy clip here that people don't normally do. I'm going to try it anyway. Okay, one more go. No, never mind. Doesn't save that much time. It's like two seconds if you go. So the undead here are really annoying because, like you can see, they just keep popping up in front of you. So no matter how fast you go, they're going to ruin your day. You can see there. I just tried to rush and the game said no. I'm gonna try another clip now. No, never mind. Clips are not on my side today. Thank God I'm not doing any percent. So here's our mother, we're going to rescue her, but surprise, it was a surprise, uh, it was a trap by Jack all along, so we're going to stay in prison for a while. When I say a while, I mean literally nine minutes of prison. It's terrible. Alright, so we're going to go to prison and all of our earthly possessions are taken away from us. Um, and that tattoo I got ages ago... Um, I'll, I guess I'll show you now. So, some of you may be familiar with the the famous developer of this game, Peter Molyneux. So, to give us some good luck, we've got his, his face there. It's good luck. So, um, he's going to be there, sitting all smug, gurning a little bit to help us on for the rest of the run. So, um, yeah, I guess this is also a really good time to talk about another bounty we've got up on this game, Prison Skip. So. You could, you've heard for a while, I've been slagging off prison skip, uh, prison for a little while because you can see there's nothing to it. Um, and there's also another thing in that when we do any percent, we run the game in French just for here because because they're just all talking. It turns out French is the far, they just talk the fastest, so shout outs to the Frenchies. Also, shout outs for them for winning the World Cup. I'm still a bit mad about that, but anyway. Um, so, prison skip, ideally, what you'd want to be able to do. You just skip this whole thing and save like nine minutes and it'd be great. However, there's a few issues. So the main one is obviously you can't just skip a quest. Um, the other thing is that we've tried using modding to remove it. So like we've tried removing this gate here and then tried to escape and we can get out there. But then it thinks we're on the race so we can't actually enter or exit any areas which is no good. Um, the closest we've gotten is actually clipping past the trigger that starts us or moves us in here and that will um, 
mean that we can run with our mother all the way back to the end of the quest, but then when we try and exit, it's like, oh hey, you're leaving a quest area, you can't do that. And that's the closest we've gotten. So, if you can find a prison skip, or even a partial prison skip, you will be the winner of $250. And yep, that, that's right, $250, all for finding a skip. So, if you want to make me $400 poorer, go ahead and find some skips, and the Fable community will thank you forever. If there's anything, if there's anything you want to read out, go ahead. Time to move out. It's race time, and you'd better put on a good uh, We like to take the opportunity to remind you of some bit wars that are still going on, and oh, yeah, the that one is still the safe or abandoned the prisoners. We can probably close that in a little bit, by the way. It's like, give it two minutes, and you can close it off. Let me hear it. Okay. Currently, the lead is still safe the prisoners with sixty-five dollars so you can still snipe this right yeah you got two minutes to snipe it get your paypal password quick and it's only 46 dollars to snipe it only 46 dollars not to do So here's a guard, and his gimmick is that he likes to read poems. And spoiler alert: the poems are terrible bad. They're like so bad they're good. They they underflow. Behold the ball. Here is absolutely sublime words. We're just doing a little bit of sneaking. The ball. So we fail every the time. First, um, the first year we always fail to get because basically we need to find the key in one of those books to escape, um, and we always fail at first try unless we fail well, the first race, well, which is only about well, ten seconds slower. So again, eh? usually the prison is used like a pee break sort of thing. So you if you really need to go for that pee, you can you do that. A few less of you this year. Also, yeah. while we're here, this beard is actually you can only get at this point in the game. There's no other point you can get in the game. It's like got a name and stats and price and everything but just oh, nobody sells it um, so this is the only bit you can get and you can't even keep it because um, later on you end up growing a beard as part of a quest so it's unfortunate even during any percent because it's a, a main quest that you do so uh, have some more Peter model on you he's dead now Look lively, scum. Time to move ah. out. It's race time, and you'd better put on a good show. Some of us have bet a lot of money on you. Win, and we like you. Lose, and you get a round in the torture chamber. I'd just like to point out how much this must yes. hurt of just punching Sounds bare fun. metal with your fists. <laughs> Let me hear it. This here is an absolute unit. All right. Y three. Two, one. I can't lose again. Faster, faster. That way, you useless. Bill. All these guys are just insulting our speedrunning abilities. It's completely bullying. That way, you useless. Bill. Keep running, scum. Move it, move it, move it. That way. You useless filth! Get your finger out, pushback! Faster! Faster! I'm trying. You again. Right, then there's the last lot and then we're going to be escaping. So, what is the uh, status of it? Because it's going to happen in about a minute. What's the um, is the prettiest color. status of the uh, prisoners oh, saving or abandoning? is the prettiest colour. For it's in her name, her eyes. And her soul. For it's in her name, her eyes, and her soul. 
Just like to know that for the bid war for save or abandon the prisoners, we are saving the prisoners. Brilliant. Okay. So, hello. I'm free to the courtyard. Come on. All you guys, you're all free. I'm free. At last, I'm free. I'm free. I would name them all, but. There's, there's quite a lot of them. Look at these absolute lads. Lads on tour right here. I just hope the guards don't. Guards ignore them, hopefully, because otherwise that could be a bit embarrassing. Right then. It's payback time. So we go open this chest and we get all our missing stuff. Hey! It's not exercise time! Oh, all four of them are still alive. Brilliant. See how long they last. What the hell? Get it! Oh no! What the hell? Get in! I really hope they didn't all just die there. That'd be a bit tragic. No, we still got all of them. Vengeance you know what? Have a heal life. Oh no, you don't. Well, they might have just killed themselves there. And they're also alive, brilliant, I think. Yeah, that's that's a two in one person. One one or more of them is likely to die here. Try as best I can to keep them alive. Alive, brilliant. Okay. My mission to keep them alive. Wow, all of that. I think that is literally the first time all five of them have survived. Pretty incredible. Also, I'm the wrong way. Um, they're all gonna go off and live happy lives as ex-convicts. I don't know what ex-convicts do in Albion, but whatever it is, they'll be doing it. So, back to the guild real quick to pick up some more quests. Your guild seal has been reactivated. Welcome. And a lot of the quests here are a lot more chilled out, so which is quite nice. It's a quite a nice break from all the hustle and bustle that's just happened. Are we I shouldn't have berserked there. I literally go run out right here. So this is bounty hunt. It's just like a very straightforward quest where you just save to. Uh, villagers from bandits here. Again, it's it's a nice it's a nice breath of breath of air after all the uh, crazy stuff that's been happening. Just gonna ignore these guys. Ignore these guys too. 
go try and kill this guy. Just skip a piece of dialogue. There we go. And just kill all his buddies. But are actually more powerful than him. Even though he's like meant to be the chief. What's that? Kill that guy, skip some dialogue. We had that guy. Um, he can actually be quite dangerous because if you get too close to him, he's like, all right, I'm, I'm had enough. I'm just gonna kill this um, this hostage. Luckily that's done and quest complete. Brilliant. So Orchard Farm here, there's just another little mini quest called Go to Granny Necklace. There's a granny, she's a ghost and we want her necklace. Get back to her. We literally kill one enemy, you, come back, and that is it. You. Oh, how so, wonderful. here's the farmers. Here's the ghost granny. Whoa, whoa, what happened there? I just rolled over the, uh, rolled over the fence there. That's never happened before. Watch that back later. New skips found live at ESA. So just zapping him there because it's easier than running up and hitting him with a bow a bit quicker. The necklace. Ooh. How can I? Job done. Oh, how wonderful! You gave the necklace. So great with color skate. And about two hours ago, we bought a bunch of crunchy chicks, and now we're finally going to use them. And here we go. There's a demon door we passed super early on, and basically he wants us to do something evil, so we can either be super 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 evil or we can just do like some evil deeds in front of him and eating every, each crunchy chick you eat gives you five evil because you're just like eating this bird thing this shit. so kind of um he lets you in oh yeah you can do this little f oh, i guess i'll show you this one thing Roll on here. You can interact with the thing from there. Just teleport over. Right. Back to. Okay. If you got any more donations, send them through. Uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of some good wars, and we have the fight against Julius in Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance HD, where Rebel Dragon wants to challenge Julius as a level 1 character. We also have the Orient the Blind Forest Definitive Edition. Uh, Incentive going with the bad ending. Currently at two hundred ninety dollars out of one thousand. And we also have a bit work going on about the Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl language setting. 
And currently in the lead is Russian with forty dollars. So yeah, that little demon door there, he wanted us to give him a gift to show him that we really loved him, so we gave him a perfume and um, it turned out he had some some like James. weird stuff in there. He's into some kinky shit apparently. This is Hob Cave, it's again one of those quests where people had a lot of trouble with it as a kid and it turns out to be really easy, you just run through and everything is fine. So. First thing we're going to do is open this silver chest which has a Will Master's Elixir, I think it's the second to last one we get. Only requires five keys, it's able to be gotten pretty early on. Cool. Uh, out we go. down here to the last bit of the map. There's a nymph there, we're just gonna kill her straight away. I'm not gonna well we're gonna grab a key person and kill her. Now this kid with the completely ill-fitting voice, like he just cheered like a 40-year-old man. He's meant to be like 10 or something. Not rolling into a pole would be a good idea. Even if they do get to him and start attacking him, they won't damage him long enough. See, look, they've lost all aggro on me and didn't even get harmed at all. Back to Rose Cottage and surprise, it turns out the... Um, Granny here is actually really abusive to him, so he's gonna just run away from home. He said the nymph, uh, the uh, granny is actually worse than the nymph. It's a very update voice line. Okay. This demon door here requires you to have 14 combat mods, and luckily we, we can get exactly that number just by doing this, one, two, three, 14 multiplier, easy peasy. Back out we go. Avoid all these guys. Another little demon door here. He just wants us to fight a bunch of uh, hobs, so we're just going to oblige him. We're going to do it now rather than before, just because it's easy to do now and we're on the way anyway. So.
and done. You defeat. Another side quest here, Dock with Disturbance, and this is just fighting a bunch of minions with Barrows until the bad things go away. Oh, so the guild thought I need. The only real danger in this um, run is that, like, basically, uh, or like in this quest rather, is that um, Briar is going to do some, like, chanting stuff, but if she gets hit, she'll get knocked out of place, and there's a chance she gets knocked out of place so badly that um, she actually doesn't recover from it, and you, like, you'd have to get, her to hit, get hit again in the right direction, or you um, have to just reload the quest. Neither which are ideal. Just while this is happening, we're going to take a quick detour. Might be a mistake, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Let's get this nice crossbow. Okay. Like an intercept, be like no. Might as well use the potion as well, I should have used it ages ago. And just like that, the quest is done. So this is a pretty lewd bit, I'll be honest. If you're under the age of 12, first of all, I don't know where you're watching, but if you are, sort of look away for five minutes. Um, so this this may or may not be a, a bordello, and we may or may not be taking over it. So, um, where is the bartender? I need to purchase some beer. Ready to help? We're gonna get 10 beers. And what we're basically gonna do, get the unit completely smashed, because he talks in his sleep and he's going to tell us where the bordello deeds are and from there we're going to dig them up and call ourselves the right for owner. We've just got Peter's model new space there judging. There is an alternative way you can do this which is if you shave your beard, wear a wig that's a bit like this one and dress like a woman, you can sleep with him and he will tell you the deeds and yeah, it's slower but you can do that if you really, really want. So, here are the Bordello Deeds. Pick them up. And a side effect of these Bordello Deeds is the fact that we can now um, You've got access the uh, services, uh -huh. shall we say, for free. So, there's this lady here. She's, she wants to go on a party or something. So, um, and basically what we need to do is we need to do 10, let's say, parties, and after the 10th party we can open this demon door here. He said, oh, you have to be a real stud to get in here. It turns out he's just very lonely, because like, when you open he's like, oh, I only have one question. What's it like? Uh -huh. so, uh, feels bad, man. Give everyone a go here. Actually, two goes. Okay. Also, I just want to point out this hero must have the stamina of an absolute unit. Like, surely he'd be a bit tired by now. But. Your 
lordship, worshipped by all. And last two. Wonderful. This is this is Polly. Apparently, it used to be pretty Polly. Now it's just Polly. You be the judge. Shout out to Clean Sarah. He he loved it. This is his favorite character in the game. Right then. So now that that stuff is done, we're gonna open this demon door and be rid of this place forever until I. Very effective use of Berserk. Good, good three seconds there. So after that little perusing, we're gonna go back to something a little bit more serious and um, and investigate the mayor and find out that she killed her sister. But that doesn't matter. We're still gonna marry her because it adds another quest on and all of that jazz. Let's talk to this dude first. Why, Amanda? Turn on and off our lamp three times. Turn it on now. Why turn it off? That's going to annoy me for us to run. Uh, lamp. Thank you. So we're going to go into the cellar and find out. Surprise, yes. Lady Grey did kill her sister to become mayor. The Alex Jones dude was right all along. But we're still going to marry her. A wise decision, my Fantastic camera angle. Okay. What next? Uh, back to Barfield. Right, right. That was a great shot there of the hero's crotch. Really bad tackle. So yeah, you just have to kill those undead there, and the more of the spawn, the better. But unfortunately, we got pretty rough for luck. Anyway, we're going to eat a golden carrot. So it's daytime. We'd like to pick up some potions while we're here. And also, we got the second to last pub game. It's not quite the last. It's the easiest. And now that I've said that, I'm gonna perform very badly at it, like I have the other ones. But. Will you bet? Everyone else is going to be freaking out. We need to get 30 points, which should be pretty straightforward. I need to just get 10 on this one. Okay, a little bit light on it. You won. There you go. And here is the last assassin here, actually. We should get a prize now. Oh yeah, I should probably go there first. Oh, hello. Okay, so... Back to the guild.
You have done well to deal with the assassins. Oh, Their steady. shadowy deeds will ride Albion no longer. Pleased to serve you. Yeah. Oh. We thought you'd been killed. Are you in your way? Something isn't right here. What? No! No! Oh, no! Shout out to that voice line, which sounds a lot more suggestive in French. Um, and shout out to, again to Clean Tail, that's his favourite voice line. I have a quest card oh. from your mother. Apparently, getting stuck on inanimate objects is my thing. Yeah, open this 20 key chest, has a legendary weapon. Right then, so now is actually one of the hardest bits of the run. So, we're going to head to Twin Blades Camp. So, um, if you're familiar with the game, you might know about Scorm's Bow, which you get from the uh, Chapel of Scorm. And basically the gimmick is you have to sacrifice someone at exactly midnight. And the good question is, what is midnight? So, you see that clock in the top right corner, which is pointed in the middle of the sun. It needs to be the other way around, so it needs to be pointing in the middle of the night part. Need someone to watch your back. So, what we need to do, we need to sleep so it's night time. Just Hire this friend. Uh, go wear the plate mail suit. And we're going to hire another guy. And basically, the point of reference for me, because there's no like visual reference, it's not like this is midnight now, is I'm going to wait for a few, like a couple of pixels to change a certain colour on that clock, which it means I know that it's nearly midnight. I'm going to count from anywhere from 10 to 15, depending on how I feel. And then I'm going to try it. And then I seem to get good luck with it, so we'll give it a go. There's like only there's a quite a small window, it's like only a couple of seconds maybe, and not much reference for it. Also I like how this map is shaped like a smiley face, I just want to point that out. It's quite cute. So to which close gate? But you get a slow time here. Um, and you think slow time would slow down the game clock. No, it doesn't actually do it at all. It actually keeps it going. It also does the same with the in-game time as well. Um, so we can just avoid sort of that. Also, that troll we ran into right at the start of the game is still here. Just, just there. Man's just there. The second guy up in Temple of Avo, and then head over to the Chapel of Scorm and try our luck. Need a good sword to fight the. Lead the way. Right then, let's go, lads, to Barrowfields. Also, these two like mercenaries bicker between each other because one's meant to be the good one, one's meant to be the evil, evil one. There's like a whole bunch of stuff for them. Like, if you go to certain areas, they'll say lines. Like, um, there's a statue in the middle of Lookout Point that like turns um, in accordance with the time of day, and they like even mention it. It's like a whole bunch of stuff for them. It's nearly midnight, but not quite. About halfway between. Slept in midnight, probably a little bit more actually. Right then, so if I can get in. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to make a save here just in case I get it wrong. Um, this is just the profile I use for saves. Um, and hope for the best, and then if it doesn't work, I'll reload it. So it's not quite there yet. I'm going to have to get pretty close to the screen to. You know I once burnt down an old village. Must you poison the air with your words? 
So right now there's a row of two pixels, so you need to become a row of one, which is about to be. Make some change. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Their followers group. Let's go. The die is cast. Your desire for First try. <laughs> Damn. I wasn't actually expecting to get that. So you I can buzz off. So anyone who's run this category can confirm that that is an insanely difficult trick to pull off. And somehow I just get lucky with it. Also, that was a gold split as well. Uh, let's see. Where are we going to? Look out point. So that also made us pretty damn evil. And speaking of pretty damn evil, we're going to do something pretty damn evil. So, um, yeah, it's pretty evil. So, at the guild, we go to lookout point. So, the way boasts work is that when you have a boast, all these villagers will spawn here so they can cheer you on and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the guild. And we basically, because when you teleport somewhere, you can recall back to the same area. And, um... What I'm basically going to do is, there's a bit of a bug where when you teleport to, to the look, uh, to lookout point over and over again, it will spawn another set of villagers over and over. So right now, there's eight of these bad boys. He's a bit scared of us. We're going to teleport six times to spawn 48 villagers. And what will I do with those 48 villagers, you might ask? Well, if you put two and two together, killing a villager, for instance, gives you quite a lot of evil killing 48 and then using force push on their dead bodies to give you one evil purse per force push you can you can see how that might add up so I don't even know what I think I'm on try three I'll do one more just for good luck before I do seven Seven, yes. Okay, so for everyone's safety, I am going to turn the game volume down to that because it gets quite loud. <laughs> and they are all dead now. <laughs> and this is how we make evil. Actually, I'm going to put on the uh, villager gear so you can just see how much evil we get. You can actually see our horns growing in real time. This is what Peter Molyneux wanted. And we just sort of maintain eye contact with this person here who's probably scared to death and is going to need therapy for the rest of their life. It's alright. Okay. So now we are maximum evil. And we need that to max out some evil spells. So before we used to do this thing where we would, um, at the end of the... Um, just before uh, at, during Jack of Blades fight, we would hit our sister repeatedly and get a bunch of um, evil but that was like super slow it was like three minutes and that is let's be honest that was way more cool and turn the game back up now we also got this very fa fancy expression from that can't put a price on that. Anyway, uh, this next quest is actually pretty tough, so we need to talk to this lady here. So it's basically My name is apparently getting up from nothing at all. Um, basically, we need to pick up a trader and escort him out, which sounds pretty straightforward, apart from the fact that the trader is incredibly squishy and the guards are incredibly powerful, and there's a lot of them, so we're going to hope for the best. And there's also a potential bug which like completely soft locks the end of the quest, which we have to hope for the best for. So what we're going to do, we're going to kill these two dudes, and you actually. That's a terrible crime, no matter who you are. It's alright, now there are no witnesses. Last guy's life. 
Okay. So this guy is technically not following me now, but he follows us a little bit, so this sort of gets him out of harm's way for a little bit. So, hello, friend. Why are you here? Follow. Okay. You must be with my gang. Kill these two guys. Back to Bowser's George. So I'm acting a slow time here just to keep everyone off this guy's back. So he's following me, that's good. Okay, we want Okay. So now we should hopefully finish the quest and hopefully don't soft lock. Yes, we got it. Okay. So we're gonna enter and exit Bowstone Jail like three times, and this will trigger the um, the fight with Thunder. So we're gonna chase him to Headsman's Hill. He goes down like a sack of potatoes. By the way, he is not a challenge at all. Like the only thing stopping us from one hitting him is his health thresholds, like his his phases. Go ahead up here. Also, if there's any uh, donation or anything you want to read out, go ahead. Yes, we have two donations coming in. Yep. The first one is a five dollar donation from Owen Wilson's Cat Key. He, he's very generous. Yeah. Thank you, Owen Wilson. It's Marky. with the comment, me. Wow. Wow. You'll fight bravely. And we have a ten dollar donation from Nordic Soy, saying, pay no attention to the pretty damn evil guy rolling around the countryside, shaking all the ladies of the night and murdering his fellow followers. Just another guy here in the land of fables. Sorry, I murdered your entire village. By the way, donation to run a choice. We'll put it towards Thug 2. Thug 2 with my boy English Ben. Yeah, there's, pay no heed to this evil guy with horns and a tattoo of the these people's gods on their back, you know. It's just your average, your average Joe, your average Joe. Looks like this. Also, goodbye Thunder. It's not the last we'll see of him. We've taken his dignity and his and his um, woman, but we're going to take away his life later on, so it all balances. It's all part of the game. So back to Bowser and South, and we're going to get married now, yay! we had to do was cover up a few murders and disgrace a few former heroes and sacrifice our morals, you know, simple stuff. It's also kind of funny because sometimes like her AI doesn't kick in properly so just before you get married like she'll completely slag you off, she's like oh you're disgusting or something. We'll see if we can get to do that. So, so yes to get My hero. I heard what happened. No, nothing there. She's, she's being nice to us this year. That gives us access to Bowstone Manor, which is her, her private house or whatever, I guess. So. In here, and there's a silver key in, uh, located in her bed, and you actually get an evil deed for picking it up, so what she was doing with it, only God knows. And we also get a nice katana. Always nice as well. So, what are we even doing from here? Opening the Greyhouse Demon door. Excuse me, undead buddies. I think one of them just went fine. Wow. Uh, 
ignore everyone here. Just another spot of fishing, ain't nothing wrong with it. Oh, this is a tough one. Yay, we got it. I know. This demon dodger requires us to be married to Lady Bray. Um, because there's an alternative way where you can actually expose the mayor as as like a killer and then you can become mayor and it basically does the exact same thing except you can't open this demon door so if you want to be a good boy you have to take some sacrifices. I have a quest card from your mother. It's quickly. Come to the map room and speak. Go take that quest from the guildmaster and return to a coast. And big surprise, it turns out Maze is a traitor. Wow, who thought it? Okay, go up there and deal with him. Also, another fun fact. So this. This guild, uh, the Guildmaster's chanting, it doesn't actually mean anything, but in different versions of the game, it's actually translated, so I think in like Italian or something, he just meditates and goes on, like in another one he says something else, but it's not actually any uh, language as far as I know, so, there's actually, this maze fight is actually really tough, so, what I'm having to do is I'm having to knock him down, which makes him more vulnerable, and that way I can skip two uh, phases of his in once and there's something called lighthouse skill which ideally I'd like to get which is because normally he'd like teleport up to the top of the lighthouse and you have to follow him up but um, if we get this right yep we did we can avoid that we need to just kill him and that was a really really clean maze fire I don't think I've had a clean fire like that in ages yo yeah Yay for killing off main characters! Right, back to the guild. Oh yeah, and split as well. I guess I should check how many potions I have as well, that could be potentially a problem. I imagine we... Oh, 77, that's more than enough. So now the world is ending and everything is terrible and we have to try and stop Jack. Spoiler alert, we can't. Um, we're just running through a bunch of areas. So one thing I would have liked to have shown off during the glitch exhibition but wasn't able to is actually during this quest you can actually clip out of the uh, barriers here and just walk around to any other map in the game and when you do every area will have like this hell sky. Um, I'm just going to take a short detour here because I'm going to actually dig up the prize for all the getting all the treasure clues here. I know the world's ending and everything but we won our prize. It's of all things a frying pan. Uh, the frying pan actually is, it doesn't do too much damage but it's got a whole bunch of augmentation slots which means you can like make it do a whole bunch of fire damage or the thing that we we always do is um, we always put a bunch of mana augmentations which like increases the re regeneration of magic so you just regenerate like an absolute madman. Don't actually do it in the round but it's just nice to do casually. Yeah, um, if you clip out of one of these maps, you can actually just visit the rest of the game and it's all got like the hell sky and everything spawns, even in like cities or something. So you can literally be in a city and everyone is just minding their business. And then a minion will spawn and just like kill everything. It's pretty funny. There's Thunder, that's not the last we'll see of him. We'll deal with him later.
and this is the last area. And then we're going to actually fight Jack Furiel for the first time. There's two fights. Right then. So we're going to max out the last of our stats, so we are now, in a second, we have every single stat maxed out, so that's one bit of 100% done. Yay. Anyway, so Guildmaster's here, he's dying a little bit, but it's fine. And we're going to fight off against the bigger bad, Jack and Blade. He's not that big and he's not that bad, it's pretty easy to be honest. So all we're going to do, just need to kill these minions to break open the barrier. Okay, hit him once. See if we can get a frame perfect trick I've literally never gotten before. Nope, no, wasn't going to get. He's going to fly up in the air, and then we just need to hit him with our bow, and it's literally that easy. Go down like a sack of potatoes. He also like moves forward a little bit, it's always funny to see him do that. And he's dead. And we've got the Sword of Bounds and we're going to throw it away. Because it adds another qu uh throwing it away adds another quest on, so we need to do it as part of 100%. You have reached legendary status. Where is... yeah, so let's great sword, there we go. We've also got a crap ton of XP, like if we didn't have stuff maxed out before, we could do it now. Okay. Many then this cutscene. So this is the start of the Lost Chapters part of the game. So the extended Ooh, portion. And we're going to start off with a little puzzle where it's... The, the puzzle of day and night, I guess. So first thing I'm going to do is actually block, because blocking, we found accident, accidentally, it increases your movement speed throughout this whole thing. Like, I guess it reinitializes something. So you just move a whole bunch faster and all you have to do is block. We actually, um, I'll explain after this in a bit. The potential for me to punch forward here, and then if I walk sideways, then I can walk diagonally just for that one step. So this was all found completely by accident by me when I was, um, because obviously there's like an ideal pattern to do for this, and for like three years I did the same pattern, which was like 10 seconds slower, I was just very reluctant to learn the new one, and I learned the new one, and I was just like, while I was waiting, I'd just punch in the middle, and then it happened, like what you saw there, where I'd punch forward, and then I'd move diagonally, I was like, wait a second, what's going on here? Um, so... We, we spent, me and Kato spent ages test, uh, like a good few hours testing it and then we found out, oh yeah, you can just block and things go faster and then you can punch there and walk diagonally. And that's done. If you've got any donations, send them through. Uh, we'd like to take the opportunity and uh, talk a little bit about Safety Children, which is the organization that all the donations are going to. And Safety Children actually is, was founded nearly 100 years ago and today works in 120 countries, known to be one of the most efficient and effective charities in the world and one of a few that focus on child children. Last year, Safety Children helped more than 170, 157 million children around the globe. So, thank you all for your donations. All going to a good cause. All for a good cause. So, here's our first encounter with the Come summoners. On, the They're potentially really difficult. And they can also be not, so, um, whoa, you can't just get out like that. So normally they do this weird death animation like that. Sometimes you can skip it, we don't quite know how, but sometimes they'll just sort of jump backwards and just instantly die. I'll see if we can have it happen here. No, not there. Um, 
So they charge up that attack and they can't be damaged while they're doing it. If I try and attack him, I just take damage. Oh yeah, there you go. That's the, that's the skip I was talking about. It saved like three seconds and we have no idea how it, it's like caused. But yeah, there you go. Luckily we do so much damage that they just like, as long as we get one hit on them, they go down. Speaking of doing so much damage, we've got the Ice Troll here and he's really annoying. Because, so he's going to do this. going to attack him with the sword. And he's going to do this 13 times and after the 13th time he can be killed. Alright, so Archon Shrine will probably be coming back to this area a whole bunch uh, throughout the last sort of 15 minutes of the run. So, heading up here we get the one of the last legendary weapons actually, Orcon's Club, and if you think this, is a le this isn't a legendary weapon you're wrong. It's a legendary stick, you can see. Let me actually equip it for a little bit. See, it's a tiny little thing, but it's legendary regardless. Uh, let's put the normal stuff back on wherever it is. Okay. There's Briar Rose. She plays actually a quite large role in the uh, extended portion of the game, but in the original game she does basically nothing. So next up is Necropolis, and Necropolis is it's its not ideal, let's put it that way. So the idea is you need to get three glyphs of inquiry, whatever it is, and then the fourth glyph at the end. And they're gotten by digging up these graves. And so unfortunately the graves are randomised every time. Luckily, um, one of the runners, Giant Steps, and his brother found out that the grave names correspond to what's going to be in them. So basically, rather than us having to dig up every grave and hope for the best, all we need to do is just check every uh, check the graves and see what's in. So we'll see. We're looking for three. We're looking for T Fung. I love it. And um, oh, shout out to T Timmons by the way. He actually donated last year for ESA. He's one of the developers. So big shout outs to him. So we're looking for T. Uh, sorry, looking for I love it, George W. and T Fung. So there's the first one. I believe this is our last instance of fishing in the run, so thank god. And it's for our 29th silver key. There we go. Fishing's done. Yay! No more RNG until later! Till next run, until next run. Okay, what are you? What are you? Okay, I'm getting some rotten luck here. Big Glover. No, none of you guys. Surely it's gonna be one of you guys. Oh, okay, apparently I got my response from that guy. Uh, second to last silver chest here, which has Archon's battle armor. It's very cool. Definitely worth the prize. There you go. Last one. Just 
just kill these minions while these summoners are charging then. No, it would be really nice if I got an animation skip. No. Wishful thinking, maybe. And that's job done. This is Sarn. So what we are going to do now is head over to Lost Bay, pick up our last silver key, open the final silver chest which requires 30 keys, and then there's a demon door who wants us to give him all his, all our silver keys so we're going to do it then, because then everything is done. Nope, excuse me. Um, and also another little fun fact, you can act, oh, excuse me, thank you very much. So what you can actually do is, if you go through the whole game without collecting a single silver key and you talk to a demon door, he will let you in, but he'll actually mention like, how on earth did you make it here without getting a single silver key? I'll let you in, but why do I always have to meet the freaks? So that was our last key there, and we're going to open our last chest, and the reward for this is absolutely not worth the effort gone through. You get an 185 damage sword, which is like half the amount of the one we've got right now, and we get some gems that's like worth 2,000 gold in total so absolutely not worth it at all do not recommend 25 key yeah sure 30 no but regardless we're gonna hand in all our silver keys here this lovely guy is very lonely and he just wants some silver keys So back to Snow Spire, we are going to do the final pub game, which is Coin Golf 2. And in theory, this one should be easier, but I always seem to mess it up in some unique way. Um, at one point, I did lose a world record pace run because I spent three and a half minutes on it. So, aim this way. There we go. That's in two. That's good. Aim here. Give me some beer. Chuck us over a beer, will you? Chuck Get us in, brilliant. Beer, Everyone is requesting Give their beers. Beer. That's good. They're getting their their brew skis ready for the end of the run. Oh, I'm getting pretty good luck with this. I think this might even be my best in terms of how many strokes I've got in it. Uh, I don't want to over. Get on this one. There we go. You won. That was an eight. Brilliant. Probably gonna be a gold split. And there's gonna be very dramatic music for a second. You have uncovered. And then it's done. Do you know how I kept I I keep slagging off thunder? Now I um now I'm gonna kill him and just put him out of his misery for a little bit. Up on shrine. Are you there? Again, he goes down a sack, like a sack of potatoes. He is not hard at all. Pretty easy. Hey, glad you. So we are going to not hold glade. Now look, I won't. Stolen your dignity, we've stolen your woman, and now we are going to steal your life. And then he's dead. No fight whatsoever. And coming up next is Ransom Victim, which is also in this same area. So. This is another one, just those get someone from one uh, from point A to point B and then back. Oh, hey. Go pick up this guy's son from Witcher Caves and then bring him back. Not much to it, it's just killing some bandits along the way. So if you've got any uh, donations, now's a good time. We have a five dollar donation from Squawky saying can the guy in the front row dab Come on, do it for the do it for the kids. Go on. Go on. For the Oh, half a dab. Half a dab. Ha half a dab. Okay. Half a dab. It's for the kids, it's fine. We have a five dollar donation from Butters saying my favorite game. Thanks for the run. 
You're welcome. And we have a $25 donation from CZ Neverender. Oh, dude, shout outs. Yeah. Shout outs to Atem and the Fable community for being absolute units. I mean, all of the size of the community, absolute units. I guess while I'm here, I can just shout out the Fable community because I, I've, I started running this game about nearly five years ago now. It's been my basically only speed game for the last five years. And it started off with just two people, me and me and one other person, Blasted T, an SDA run and a dream. And now with, I think the Discord has like 100 people in it now or something. And there's like 20 runs on the leaderboard and stuff. It's absolutely insane. So big up the Fable community. Also, for some reason, my multi-strike has just completely lost its sound. I don't know how, but... Also, he's an assassin. Don't we don't like him. If you don't get so, just go kill him. Wow! So we've got Owen Wilson here. With his wows. And now that we killed that, everyone here is going to be quite cross and wants to kill us. If we actually choose to pay the ransom, instead we'll... Um, We'll have a whole bunch of just like ragtag enemies. Like, I think in the next era there'll be like 20 wasps and a white balverine, and just like very, very random selection of enemies. But the uh, bandits are definitely faster. Oh no! Excuse me. Thank you. Oh, that guy's dead. I'm going to go back home. We're not actually going to take him back to the chieftain. We're actually going to take him to his brother just because his brother is slightly closer. Spoiler alert, his brother does kill him for some, like, I don't know, family politics or something. I don't, I don't, I don't look into it. I'm just a hero. I just, I just do it for the time. So, hello, friend. I brought to you one brother. Quest done. No, because we're mean, we're also going to kill off Briar Rose, who's been helping us because we need a hero soul to open this gate, and hope this thing works. she's close by, so we're just going to take that one. Well. You'll have to find me first. So she just disappears for a little while and then comes back every so often and then we can attack her for a bit. Oh, we are in 10 potions. 31 will do fine for the rest of you. There's only like 5 minutes left of the run. to Litchfield Graveyard. So we're going to do a little trick here. So um, we're going to teleport to Litchfield Graveyard, walk halfway through the map because we need to be here anyway. We're going to go halfway through the map and then we're going to teleport and teleport back and that just saves us a little bit of a journey. So save a bit of time there. Guild. Oh, 
Welcome back, sir. This... Okay, and then we're also, while we're here, we're going to get Avos tier, which is like the alternative to the Sword of Aeons. So we continue to get this book, talk to a gravestone, and then we get it, so it's not hard to get at all. And sword gotten, right. So back to the graveyard. We're gonna fight Nostro. He's he's really easy. He's a really easy boss to be honest. Like he's this split is like twenty seven seconds long, so not long at all. And only like ten of those are actually gonna be fighting him. So we're gonna do Berserk. Hold strike out. So he can only be damaged once we kill an undead, so do that and if we get it in the right cycle. And he's dead. Super easy. Right, and just before we fight the light, the last boss, we're going to head back to Bowstone. Get the fruits of our labor for all the lovely hero dolls we've got, and all the uh, the photos we took of Spot the Edition because we're too bad to do it. All the uh, two and a half minutes of choking, at, um, card sorting, all of that stuff. It's all coming to labor, and we get a doll. It's not really worth the result, to be honest, but it's part of 100%. So we're just going to break down this door. He's in here. He doesn't mind. We'll get a lovely camera angle in a second. No. Very enjoyable conversation with the ceiling. And back to Archon Shrine. What I'm going to do, just before I do it, I'm just going to double check that I've got everything. Don't want to finish this run, just find that you've got nothing. Or like I've missed something, so. Quest, current quests. Nope, those four can't be, be completed. Personality, 2 hours 40 minutes. 52 quests, so the last one we finish will be the 53rd one. There you go. Uh, experience, got everything maxed out there. Uh, weapons, here, and there you go. Normally you'd have to watch the credits at the end of the run, but like the credits are like 11 minutes long and I don't want to have to put anyone through that. So we come back to the final boss here. So I guess while we're doing that, I just want to thank everyone for watching. Those of you watching on Twitch, it's it's either graveyard hours or it's NA hours, depending on where you live. But if you're watching, thank you very much. Big shout outs to everyone in the Fable community again. Big Law, Clean Sarah, KJ, Amanda, CC, Two Worlds, just everyone. Everyone is absolutely incredible. We couldn't ask for a better community. And if you're ever interested in learning Fable, maybe not necessarily 100%, just any other category, definitely hop in there. there. There's always people wanting to help and there's a whole bunch of resources available, so definitely have a look into that. We just need to watch this cutscene for like 20 seconds and then it's time. So we need to wear this mask just as part of 100% because it's like a piece of special headgear, so... Time. 31721. The and yet a tremor ran through the world. There you go. You wanna know the funny thing? That was only four minutes off world record. And I reckon if I didn't crash, if I didn't choke for like two and a half minutes, and if I didn't just like faff around, I probably could have gotten world record, but it's fine. So That's the main part of the run done, but I do believe a glitch exhibition did get met. So, what I'm actually going to do, I'm not actually going to load that yet, actually. Let's kill that in Task Manager. Uh, where is Fable? .e? No. Yeah, close that. In the meantime, we got donations. Yeah, sure. Uh, Fire away. We have a $20 donation from Anonymous saying, Hey man, nice to see an English runner. Need to make my way out to USA one day. Europeans unite. We got a twenty dollar donation from Owen Wilson's cat calf. <laughs> Can we get a Mexican wave from the audience members? Hype! This this will be pretty easy, Con. You can do it. And we have a twenty dollar donation from Clean job, Sarah. Oh, dude! Shout out to Clean. I 
I already shouted him out before, but I'll shout him out again. What's up? Yeah, he's uh, saying, go, Adam, go, go, champ. Thank you. Thank you, Clean. Right then, so the first trick I'm going to show off, if you're familiar with the speed uh, any percent, you'll probably know this, but if not, this is going to be all new to you. So, I'm in the Chamber of Fate, which is pretty, you can get there right at the start of the game, and show you where I'm in the game. Maze's request, I've literally just finished Bandit Camp, which was like 40 minutes into the regular, uh, in 100%, it's like 20 minutes and 80%. So I'm in this map, there's nothing to it. So as you all know, the Sword of Aeons, you get it after killing Jack in this area, but that's like an hour in. However, if we stand here, summon a wasp, sort of nudge him in like this. And then if we Assassin's Rush, we can then rush through the floor and... Oh, what have we here? Is this the Sword of... Yes, it is the Sword of Aeons. So you can get that literally at the very start of the game. All you need is a summon, Assassin's Rush and a Dream and you can get this Sword of Aeons at the start of the game. And you can use it and it is insanely broken. It's as broken as you think. Um, so yeah, that's a thing you can do. If you do, if you run just the original Xbox version, you'll probably want to do that because it does an insane amount of damage. So that's the first thing. So that's Aeon's clip and that was found back in, I want to say November 2016. Um, a joint effort between me, KJ and another glitch hunter guy named Valiant Nord. So big shout outs to all of us. And... The next thing is actually, I did mention that if you go to Great Wood Color Skate, there is, we might return to it. So, um. this bridge here. So, this, it's, it's a pretty normal bridge. You can roll around um. it and things are fine. However, this part of the bridge just here is a bit of a problem with it. If you oh, run into yeah. it, you can see I'm getting stuck and not much is happening and you see me freak out a little bit. If I roll towards it, you can see it's pushing me back. I don't actually know what's going on. So you can see it's pushing me back. And if I do this correctly, if I get lucky, it will actually launch me up into the air. So this this bridge has a nickname of Bouncy Bridge. Whoops. Come on. Whoops. I want to get a good roll in here. Oh, not quite. Oh dear. These guys are going to sleep now. Come on. It. My angle. It's finicky. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. It's not actually useful for any part of the run. Come on. I want to get at least one semi decent launch. That's kind of it. Oh, there you go. So I'm now on the other side of the map. I'm a little bit stuck. Let me dig to come out of Berserk. <laughs> I can probably bully that guy from up here. If I. If I just. Nudge him. I wonder what he's gonna do. And also, to if you're ever out of bounds, all you can do, you just have to sneak, and then you can like sort of move a little bit. You can see I'm doing a little bit out of bounds. There you go. What I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna make my way back out. Oh, come on, thank you. Go head to the next area. So there's an Earth Troll here, and you think, oh, what glitches? can you do in their troll? It's not really a glitch per se, it's more of an animation bug, but I found it so hilarious that I've got to include it. So there's a spell we have called Divine Fury, which like you charge it up and then it like does a bunch of damage. And if we do it with the troll here, just keep an eye on his eyes and mouth. I think the same happens here. That's really lovely. He's also dead now. Anyway, um, is there anything else? Yes, there is, I believe. So there's actually two things. So the next thing is actually going to require me to load a modded game. So I actually modded this. Here's one I made earlier. I modded this in advance um, to allow me to roam freely around any area so there's no more barriers. So if I load this save here, I have... Um, I've done a couple of things to it, so the first one is I've I've modified the camera so you can zoom out just for sake of clarity a little bit later. If I teleport now to the Heroes Guild, 
what I've done is I've placed a, te a teleporter down, and this is again, this is really isn't a glitch per se, but it's so cool, and there's no other opportunity to show it off, so it's basically required. So look out point, I've put down a little teleporter here, which is going to take me to first of all an unused area called Creature Hub, which has no, it is just like this weird like square thing, and then I'm going to teleport up to here. It's called Region 144. It's basically like a filler world sort of thing, so. You can see this area is like half finished, half used. I've also got this weird sprint mod thing that lets me run faster. So you can see this like area is like kind of unused. I don't exactly know why these things exist, but they do. You can see also how the game handles the z-axis. Like when you run off a cliff, you can just see it just sort of drops. Um, and also with this sprinting animation, it looks quite silly with the sword. If I zoom out, you can see it's just this really crazy thing. And you see that purple thing there. If I zoom in with the bow, when I get a bit closer, you can probably see. Can't really see that well. But basically, it says invalid theme, but it's backwards. So that's, I guess, some kind of placeholder texture thing. You can see like remnants of an actual map, like the water and trees and stuff. And then you'll just look over and there'll just be something completely broken. So. It's also an absolutely giant map. It's like several times larger than any other map. So going up here. There is this aforementioned invalid theme thing. And this is actually an, like a semi-unused version, I guess, of Archon's Folly, like the last map we were in. So just jumping up here. You'll see we can just like Mountains are more of an idea, if anything, we can just sort of run up them, no problem. You can see, like, the sort of triangle and we sort of fought Jack of Blades, like, there or something. It's quite cool. But then if we go back down, this way, there is actually just a sheer drop into... See, that's kind of trippy. It's this weird, like, purple thing where you can see all these invalid themes. Also, if you want to go back up, that's... Oh, yeah, you can see it says invalid, invalid, invalid. If you want to go back up, that's absolutely fine. Just walk up. <laughs> you can drop back down. Oh, no, I fell. That's fine. Just walk back up. Um, yeah. I found this area completely by accident, and there's just like... Oh, no, there's a hill. What am I going to do? Walk up it, man. That's all you, you got to do. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, the camera didn't like that. You can see, it's just almost like someone just cut it right in the middle or something. I don't know what the reason behind this area is, but it's it's really cool nonetheless. Okay. So jumping back to the main version of the game, there's two more glitches I want to show off. One of them I probably won't be able to pull off. It can take anywhere from first try to several hours and I don't want to be here till Christmas. And then the last one only takes like 30 seconds to do and then I will be... that will be it from me. So... Loading back in, we're in Bowstone South, so before the arena, you can't actually go to Bowstone North at all. And it was like, for a while, it was like, oh, if only we could go into Bowstone North early or whatever. So if we go up to this pile of trash and we roll up here at the right angle. And then we basically need to roll up here and hopefully, hopefully, it will launch us up over this hill, over this um, wall, and then we can then go into Bowstone North and that's what happens 90% of the time it doesn't work so I'm gonna give it like two tries and then I'll move on because I could literally be hit I've literally tried it for hours with no luck so I don't wanna so I'm s kind of stuck so I'm just gonna teleport back to the same spot rather I'm just gonna try it Two more times, let's say, and then we'll call it a, and then we'll try, it, and then we'll do the last glitch and call it a day. You know what? Let's try going into it backwards. Be cool. And nothing at all, of course not. One more try, and then yeah, basically the idea is that you you basically get launched over, similar to how we did with the uh, thing in Great Wood Color Skate, and then you just sneak around. Um, there was one instance for, uh, by one of the runners, Big Law, where he literally he rolled forward, and then the area. Like he rolled into the perfect spot to just start loading the area. So he just rolled and then it just started loading in. I uh, wish we could replicate that in runs. So roll down. Oh, I was almost there. And one last go. 
really finicky to get on top of this trash pile. Oh, you can push me back a little bit there. Yeah. No. Okay. Last, last glitch, I guess. Um, it's almost a tradition at this point to end the run like this. Um, it's got the nickname of the the Michael Jackson lock. Um, for reasons you'll see why in a little bit. It shows off more in anniversary, but um, what do I do? First of all, Assassin's Rush, and we can just sort of walk on the lava here. And these, all of this stuff is more like an idea rather than actual obstacles. You can see, uh, you can't really see. I'm, I'm pointing. You can't really see it, but you can see our uh, like little um, location thing on the mirror just completely off screen. It's kind of cool. So just seeing the end of the map like this. It's fun to explore as well, but if we go back up to the uh, that hill we were on, or that sorry bridge, come on, there we go. There we go. Summon. I wanted to run under the floor, which he doesn't want to play nice. He wants to jump on top. Do it. No, he's doing the exact opposite. That's the thing, I always have so much trouble getting him on top, and then when I do. Okay, here we go. And if I Assassin's Rush now. I should. Oh no, he's going to walk right back around. We're in my glitch exhibition, are we? So. Target him. Salmon. Go. I've got to get it, man. There we go, and if we use Assassin's Rush, we are now completely stuck. So I can press ev every key on my keyboard apart from the start button apparently, and it does absolutely nothing. I can't even go to the menu, the only thing I can do at this point is all F4. So yeah, I guess that's a good point to end the run. Thanks very much everyone for watching, shout out to the Fable community again. Um, hashtag give Fable a chance for AGDQ 2019, it needs to happen at some point. Um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the marathon, and thanks very much for watching everyone. Thank you very much, SM. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Etem, if uh, with, with your indulgence, uh, I'd like to do a little quick poem that we wrote on uh, on your behalf, based on your run. It's also a nice quick summary for, for those of you who might miss the run, see what you missed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we've just seen a great 100% run of Fable. Etem beat it as fast as he was able. He had only one game crash to the church, donating no cash. But our viewers did, and we are grateful. The bare knuckle fighters got in a fright when he brought an assassin to a fist fight. Etten told us that this was fine, so is using a spell to slow down time, or using a phone to gain advantage in a memory game. The glitch showcase incentive was met, uh, not by Molyneux or a dev, but by Owen Wilson's feline pet. Of course, I mean a cat named Kev. One of the run's bigger surprises was the offer of two cash prizes, $400 worth of bounty abound for two major skips that Edson once found. Yeah, making poor indeed. Whisper, the prisoners and the children all are saved. Whoever said this run was depraved? Next, taking over a brothel. The plot now thickens. Finally, something to distract us from chasing chickens. If all that seems evil, it's actually quite nice compared to a precision timed midnight sacrifice. Congratulate him. First time, I see. Time to celebrate with a little murder spree. Generic dudes and main characters die, all to get that evil stat high. But they won't be missed. I already forgot them. Death is now come, and his name is Etim. Etim excels in exquisite explanations, outlining the roots with optimal orations. Commentary and skill making it so fun. 
and a brilliant resource to learn the run. This glitch showcase was beautiful. All of this, there can be no doubt. So thanks for running Zelda the Hedgehog Party's punch out. <laughs> oh, baby's first uh, Witcher, I heard as well. Yeah, it's um, def definitely the Dark Souls of uh, Zelda games, um, <laughs> except made by English people and Peter Molyneux. <laughs> big shout out! To, big shout out to Peter Molyneux. I, I gen like every, people slag him off. I genuinely don't mind him. He's he's a he's an alright guy. I said it's kind of like The Witcher for kids. Yeah, it's it's baby's first Witcher. <laughs> um, also. Big shout out to you for that poem. That was genuinely incredible. I I was wondering why you were so quiet for that whole run, and now I know why. <laughs> but yeah, that well, is. I didn't want to interrupt. You had such great commentary as well. Yeah. And you figured like, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we're here kind of if you if you need us, but you clearly didn't. You yeah. Know, no. I, I I was prepared to do self commentary because most of the uh, most of the runners are from the states, so obviously getting over here is not ideal. So yeah. again, give Fable a chance. ADDQ 2019 because I'd go there. They'd all be there, and it'd be incredible. And Maybe there'll be another poem. We might need to get you <laughs> over. <laughs> get you over to oh, the I can, I can just start Skype it in. That'll be fine. Oh, yeah. we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get you in there somewhere. But yeah, <laughs> thank you very much for hosting. It was oh, very nice of you. And yeah. uh, thank you very much for having me. No worries. And congrats on the, uh, on the run. So 317? Yeah, yeah, and the world record is three. three it was ba exactly... 313, wasn't it? Yeah, 313. I was exactly four minutes slower. So again, yeah. if I had a not faffed around a little bit. I probably could have gotten the record, but it's... It's what marathons are for. It's sub 3.10 for when I get home. Yeah, also um, better than the second place time as well, so... <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to KJ, by the way. I, I love you, man. <laughs> He's all right. He, he beats me in 80%, though, so he gets the last laugh. Yeah. So, um, we'll call it even. We'll call it even. Marathon 100% is the real category. Yeah, 100, make 100% uh, just Fable Thon at AGDQ, just like 12 hours of Fable and everyone will be happy. And that's uh, that glitch showcase. So where did like those glitches like come from? Were they like all kind of community found? Were they over time? I or? mean, I end up doing a lot of the stuff for the Fable community. Like I, I do the Discord. I do a lot of the glitch hunting. Like if someone says, "Oh, there's a glitch," I'll end up testing it and be like, "Oh yeah, it saves five seconds or doesn't save five seconds and all that." So some of the stuff was just me being bored of playing the game for the last twelve years. Yeah, oh, has it really been that long? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, there's some stuff where it's like it was a community effort, like the, the first one we clicked on the floor and found the Sword of Aeons, that was definitely a community effort. There was some stuff, and also the um, launch into Bowser that I couldn't actually get, um, that I tried a few times. That was actually found on the same day as well. It was like two Holy Grails were found on the same day in the same night. Um, I definitely didn't do well at work the next day because I stayed <laughs> up till like 3 a.m., just like freaking out over all these glitches. And then like, yeah. Some of them were community, some of them were stuff I found, some of them were stuff like, there was literally like the one where we didn't donate anything to the um, the temple was literally, I think I saw it on a, a Game Cheats website back in 2006 and there's no record of it ever and I've just sort of carried that information with me for 10 years and then it's like, oh yeah, we can use this. Yeah, yeah. Some, some of the things are so, yeah. Yeah, I was saying it's amazing the weird things that you recall when you play a game like that again. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty pretty bonkers, but I... Yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, I mean, there's loads of games where you kind of you have a glitch and it's just a fun glitch, and mm -hmm. then at some point, randomly, it suddenly becomes useful and like. Yeah, massive. I mean, that's basically what happened with that one. It's like, oh yeah, we can use this <laughs> in 100 percent, then it's great. Yeah. So, so if people want to pick up uh, the speed run, whether it's any percent or 100 mm percent, -hmm. what's the best way to go about it? Uh, first step would be join the Fable Discord and give me a shout out. Um, I need self-validation. <laughs> no, um, join the Discord because there's always like people always ready to help, including me, including Clean Sarah, Big Law, literally everyone wants to help. Um, and then there's speedrun.com slash fabletlc or speedrun.com slash fablexbox or speedrun.com slash anniversary. There's speedrun guys that we've all made there. I'm planning to do like a very in-depth any percent tutorial where I literally cover everything, backup strats, the whole lot. Maybe not 100%, that would probably take quite a while, but um, if you was to want to run 100% and you wanted to, if you had a question about it, just ask me, I'd be happy to even just literally sit down and help you learn the run with you sort of thing. It's, it's a very welcoming community. Oh, brilliant. Oh, are there any differences between Adversary and that version, or is it just a graphical upgrade? No, 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 there is a, a pretty big glitch. So mouse support was added like quite late in. It was added a few months after release. So there's a bit of a bug with it where you can basically select 
say for instance you've got item X and item Y, and you've got 100 of item X and one of item Y, you can basically use a glitch to turn it to 100 of item Y and then just sell like something insanely valuable. It's called menu manipulation. If you're interested, you literally search menu manipulation on YouTube and Clean Terrace made a video on about it. It explains it far better than I could. That's cool. And it means you can just get like, in 20 seconds, like 160K gold and max out everything within like a minute. So it's just completely Not bonkers. That getting money in Fable is very hard anyway. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> Give yeah. me 100 rubies for real cheap. Yeah. Here you go, have 100 rubies. They're really expensive. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> if only the real world worked that way, maybe I would... Yeah. Fable yeah. nailed economy. Yeah. yeah. Economics 101. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Real, real, real world e e econ economics would definitely yeah. not crumble under the Fable. I think we need to get it, Adam on this, see if that's uh, yeah. see if that's true or not. Yeah, doubtless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, uh, yeah, the rest yeah. of ESA. Anything in particular you're looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to going to bed soon. <laughs> that's, that's one of them. Um, there's Thug if I'm awake Ditto. to catch it. <laughs> there's Thug if I'm able to catch it tomorrow morning with my boy English Ben. There's the GTA run, so Carl does it's doing GTA 4, Tito is doing GTA 2, Omega's doing uh, GTA 3, I should know this, all missions. And then there's some other runs, Arabian Nights, the Deus Ex games. Um, all sorts. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching a lot of runs. That is a lot. So good luck getting all of those. Yeah. We'll I'll probably it. fall asleep for a lot of them, but <laughs> it's part of the fun yeah, of being yeah, here. Yeah, it's always, always part of the, the challenge coming to yeah. people's life. Cool. Um, so, yeah. So next we've got uh, coming up uh, Ratchet and Clank. So, uh, yeah, this will be...